Gravity Poo. Bring it now. But enough of this palaver. Let's get the show on the road. I am scared of you, sir, and I am protecting myself. I am protecting myself. I am scared of you. Please call the police. Hello, exactly. Come on, everybody. Wake up. Time to change. O and A party rock, indeed, indeed, indeed. Hey, what's happening? What's happening? Hi. Ooh, who's the chicken chase? What? I don't know. Front page of the news, Dan. Is that little Kim? All the. the She's supposed to go to jail. Yeah. All the disasters are over, I guess. Everything's fine in New Orleans again, I guess. Yeah, pretty much. All the water's pumped out. Everybody's back home. Uh, Everyone's back to work. Economy's great. Back to school. Because to cover the papers, uh, I see nothing about it. I ba- see. Uh, I I see a uh, Yankees back on there. Oh wait, uh, Newsday. Okay, Newsday has it. City will rise again. Yeah. The great Phoenix that is New Orleans. <laughs> Phoenix. You know, I ripped out a, a couple great stories, and I forgot to bring them in here. Oops. Travis, if you will, thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. New Orleans is one of the scariest cities I've ever been to. That's what yeah. we said. We Absolutely. Went, we went to two Mardi Gras, and I would walk around in the morning, get coffee and stuff, you know, before it got wild, and uh-huh. I was scared. Did you feel like when you were on Bourbon Street at night that, okay, this is cool as long as I stay on this street, but <laughs> yeah. if I literally go ten feet to the left... Oh, to the right, someone's going to have like a, like a chicken foot up to my neck. <laughs> <laughs> a fucking voodoo doll. That's the only place I've ever seen. I mean, even living here in New York, just saw a dude expose himself. Yeah. We, we were standing underneath one of those uh, show your tits uh, balconies. balconies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Another great thing about New Orleans that was almost washed away in the tragedy. <laughs> and I look over and there was literally a guy who had like his shirt tails like pulled out of his pants but I was to the side and he was fat so it kind of pushed out and he had his whole unit his dick and balls were just, just out hanging out and I looked I was horrified it took me like half a second before I could stand he's got his dick huh? <laughs> and the dude literally calm as can be like a totally professional pervert just kind of slipped back into the crowd and you're like and then I uh, was at Silence of the Lamb oh yeah, yeah going home, and he kind of like goes into the living room <laughs> that's exactly what he did he just disappeared <laughs> Not even putting his dick back in his pants, he just slipped back into the crowd. <laughs> that city True is pro. frightening, man. Yeah, it definitely is. Unless you stay, uh, even when you do stay on Bourbon Street, uh, it's frightening. But then you go into the little outskirt areas where, you know, Ben Ben was with us. And he's like, no, oh, dude, I know this nice restaurant over here. And we start walking, and, and you, you notice the crowd's thinning a little bit. And now you're seeing some of the locals, the people that yeah. aren't, you know, from out of town. Looking around like, oh, this isn't good. You're leaving the herd. Yeah, yeah. leaving the herd. That's what you're doing. You're grazing to the side. <laughs> and the side streets are trying to keep Mardi Gras going, uh, but it's a whole different thing. The zebra in the middle of the herd is never the one that gets the teeth sunk into his neck. Oh, exactly. It's always the ones that are on the outskirts, the one that doesn't leave with the herd because he wants to drink a little more yeah. water at the watering hole. The ones yeah. that consider themselves free spirits. Right. Yeah. Got to check all the things out. Well, great. Yeah, there's a flyer laying on the jungle floor. <laughs> hey, after party. After party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we just saw a gang of uh, black kids just beating the shit out of white people as they walked by. Yeah, that was it. White people walk by, black people walk by them, and they wouldn't even look at them. And then uh, a, I think that's a white part of their town girl, logo. Yeah, it is. It is them just uh, what <laughs> grabbing by the throat and punching the face <laughs> of a white person. And white people would walk by a guy and a girl, and uh, the guy would be punched. And the girl would just be molested, groped right there. And uh, they would finally get pulled out of the crowd, and they'd be laughing their asses off. We're watching from a balcony across the street, watching the entire thing. It was it was like watching Wild Kingdom or yeah. something. That just one th- year of the Puerto Rican Day Parade Parade was our, yeah. our tribute to New, New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great job. <laughs> Yeah. He should have got sued. <laughs> and then the cops came over and uh, and busted him up and um, dragged a couple of them away. And that was cool. And then, and then we spoke up. 
Then we're like, yeah, yeah motherfucker, <laughs> you're <laughs> busted. <laughs> They're throwing them in cars. Beforehand, we're just Whitey looking showing how brave we are. Here comes another white couple. Oh, this is going to be bad. Oh, no. <laughs> just kind of commenting <laughs> on it but doing nothing. Because we're pussies. So I guess I guess it's all cleaned up down there because uh, the papers are moving on to bigger and better things. Like Renee Zellweger, her marriage is over after five months. Big surprise there, everybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that true? Renee just walks away. Annulment in works for Zellweger and uh, that country singer she she married out of nowhere. Oh right, what the hell's his name? Kenny Chesney. Kenny, Kenny Chesney. Chesney. They uh, hooked up. Um, I guess they met at some tsunami thing. Yeah, I've so been at a concert. That's when they hooked up. They dated for a very short time and then decided to get married. And it was, you know, she was, uh, he was his, her prince, and she, he wrote a song about her based on her uh, character and, uh, what, what movie was that? Jerry Maguire. Jer that's like... You had me at hello. That's like one notch below getting the tattoo of your girlfriend <laughs> just writing some sappy fucking song that'll never go away some ass song that like it was a hit of his I guess I never heard it like J-Lo did that Dear Ben you know she cringes <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Oh, every yeah. time yeah. That, of that CD course. is not in any of her mansions <laughs> <laughs> cause it's immortalized you know it's out there it's done you did it and uh, no matter how much you hate oh, yeah. the person now that song is out there like professing a, your love they have a kid someday <laughs> Who's Ben? That's oh, about London. I was talking about that. I was talking about that. Clock. It's a producer with wild hair on the Opie and Anthony show. <laughs> <laughs> he hurked and he jerked. <laughs> so yeah. that's so that's over. But that's the front page of uh, the New York Daily News. Called it quits. She uh she filed, and uh, all it says divorce papers are very vague all the time. And um, I guess in California you have a lot of options as to what you can base your divorce on. In New York, you really only have cruel and inhuman treatment and uh, infidelity is the other one. And there's like, there might be one more, but yeah. I don't know. The it, other one is lack of sex. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there is. There's. Um, oh, really? Uh, that was yeah, a joke. Lack, lack of sex or something. <laughs> but they, <laughs> call, joke. they call it something else. But if you haven't had sex for like a year... Uh, you can get a divorce. Um, if you're separated, legally separated, for a year, then you can get a divorce without one of those wacky things put in there. But if you want a divorce quickly, you have to come up with an idea with some kind of one of these three things that New York allows. Mm -hmm. No and, uh, irreconcilable? No, they don't have irreconcilable differences in New York. Uh, that's the one I was gunning for. I had to go for uh, a cruel and inhuman treatment or something. Well, I could have been a star witness for you. But it was the other way around. <laughs> I was being treated cruelly and saying. humanly. But that been, wasn't what happened. I would have been on your side. Don't worry about that it. That wasn't what happened. I was the one that was served the papers that said that. That it's you like, were treating her bad? Yes. I'm sorry. The money I gave you wasn't clean enough, perhaps. All I remember The dates on it weren't the numbers she <laughs> enjoyed. All I remember. What can I say? How cruel could I have been? All I remember is pulling up to Anthony's house. We used to commute back then. It would be uh, like 9.15 in the morning. And Anthony sleeps right up until I'm pulling up. I know that about him, right? And uh, he's at the front door, and his wife is just yelling at him. Yeah, as I was walking yelling out. Yelling at him at 9.15, and I know Aunt might have woke up at 9. I'm serious. So he gets in the car. I'm like, Aunt, what could you have possibly done? The garbage, Opie. The garbage. What, wow. what do you mean? What do you mean the garbage? I um I it's my job, and I didn't. Like Anthony go had jobs. I had jobs around the house. Like the garbage was my job. You know when you're a kid and you have like chores, like you got to mow the lawn, right. or take out the garbage. The cat or... box was, was that my like a job. First, like serious relationship for you? Because um, it didn't seem like you you didn't yeah. set up the guidelines correctly. No, I fucking <laughs> dropped the, the ball time, on the yeah, guidelines. Happens, man. You, you have to flip out. I I I I didn't. I really fucked up. I didn't set the. Uh, Set oh, the yeah. bar early. If you so. don't break a couple of dishes or punch a wall within the first six weeks, you can no. get you're done. Yeah. No, I cruised nine years. <laughs> nine <laughs> years of OK Sweetie. That was it. Nine years of OK Sweetie, and and that was it. It was and and uh, Opie would pull up. I'd leave the house to you know, and you know I ask you to do the the goddamn garbage. <laughs> 
and it's sitting here. And say, all right, all right. Well, Opie's here. I got to go do my show. This is the behind the scenes of a guy that was becoming uh, a radio rock star. Like, all right. We I'll, were becoming uh, radio rock stars, and people right. had no idea what was going on behind the scenes. Later. No clue. He's getting I yelled at. Say, uh, I remember one. I remember oh, one. Yeah. What, what, what? I was going to say, I thought you guys were doing okay, but just the beginning of you pulling up. To pick him up, just that visual didn't have you guys making a lot of money in my brain right no, now. No, we did have that Fred and Barney type relationship yeah. with the driving to work, but <laughs> once we got in, it was kind of... Honestly, we were doing afternoon drive. Doing good. We were commuting from Long Island, and that, even you know off hours, it was a pain in the ass, so we took turns, is what it was. So one guy could mellow out and... You know, in the past, and yeah. you'd read the papers and do whatever. So we we would take turns. And we lived, we yeah, we lived off. really we, close to each other. We lived other. about a half a mile from each other. So. Oh, okay. But I would pull up, and there were... So, no, you know, I don't ask much. Another one. <laughs> I don't ask much. It's the garbage, the cat box. You got to get... I, was, I got cat box duty. This is... Now, this is from a guy, I don't want cats. Don't right. get me wrong. I like cats. I think kittens are probably the cutest little They're things on the face of the earth. Their big faces, the eyes, the head too big for the little kitten bodies. Their poop doesn't smell as bad. Uh, no, it does. No, and the, and not uh, as bad as a as a grown cat. Yeah, he's gone to McDonald's well, for twenty years. She got she got a, a cat, so now it's my cat. Uh, then she wants to get another cat for the cat to have company, so she gets another cat, a female cat. Neither of the two are fixed. What do you think's going to happen? So now mm. we have a whole litter of cats. That have to be given away. We give away cats except for two. Now we have four cats. She's turning into crazy cat lady. Four cats in this house, and I get cat box detail. It's like oh my, it's God. he had chores. It's, it's a twice a day like thing <laughs> to do because I don't like walking into a house and it's smelling like cat shit. So it, it was. Just a nightmare. You know what's funny? If I literally saw that, I, I could never go into the house. No, of course not. I had a buddy of mine one time. He was with this girl, and I went over there. I, w I was just staying, you know, for a couple of days. You know, when you have company, you kind of try to, you know, there was some huge fucking game on, like Lakers, Celtics. This is a few years ago. A huge fucking game. And she huffed and puffed. And next thing we're watching, like, fucking Little House in the Prairie <laughs> oh, or something. Oh, Jesus. And she's just sitting, and I'm looking at him, and I'm just waiting for her to go to the bathroom. And I had one of those really, like, like loud whispering. <laughs> Dude, you can't fucking stop it. This is fucking bullshit. <laughs> fucking Lake of Celtics. It's, it's game seven. You. What's yes. wrong with you? And then she comes back up. Hey, Marie, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, right. And I'm looking at him like, have the confrontation. <laughs> Do it. Yeah. Hello. I'm going to go outside and start smoking. I've never done that before. I'll be back and I'll give you seven minutes to fucking correct this, you idiot. <laughs> oh, great. I went out and uh, uh, bought a uh, couch. Uh -huh. Bought a nice couch. Actually, the first, I think, nice thing <laughs> I ever bought. Uh, because we had come from um, Massachusetts. I was living in Ashland, Mass. Uh, yeah, oh, I know. This just is the a worst fucking story I've ever. Shit hole. Yeah, we we um, uh, we we moved up because I got the gig with Opie. It was my first radio job. I was in construction. I didn't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of, as uh, my mother always <laughs> would would say. And uh, we we move up to Ashland, Mass. Opie gets a, a, a house in Newton, and I moved to Newton. Ashland. Well, <laughs> weren't well, you in Newton, Wellesley? Well, Wellesley. All right, Jeez. sorry. Yeah. I wasn't making uh, that much more than him at the time. He was. Uh, we were still. We were still. Don't all those houses have like ivy growing up the sides of them? Oh, they please! Have, believe it or not, they have shitholes in Wellesley. It's where it, Newton and Wellesley is where Mass herds all their Jews. All their Jews are there. That's the area. <laughs> I just want to live as close to Boston as possible because you know the radio station was way out in the suburbs. The so. radio station. I lived like a mile away from the station. I didn't want to live in Boston because. That wasn't where the station was. They made it sound like they were in Boston. W A A F Boston, and they're out in friggin' Westboro. In the middle it was nowhere. A, nowhere, an industrial park. And so I, I lived. First of all, I had to go with the wife and live with her mother for a while, in in her oh condo, my God. with Opie. <laughs> so it's me, <laughs> Opie, my wife, and my mother-in-law in this small, uh, uh, little townhouse. And we were on a rocket ship to. To becoming rocketing radio, to stardom, to become radio rock stars, but no one knew what the hell was going on behind the scenes. So uh, we figured, thank God, you know, mothers and daughters have a hard time living together uh, for any length of time. So uh, we got a, a place really quickly. But we got a place. It was garden apartments in Ashland, Mass, with 
like I was the only white person living there. It was all Brazilians and like other people from South America, Ecuador. Uh, I swear to you, Colombians, the, the Colombians, everything. The parking lot had these potholes in it that were huge. And when it rained, the children would go out in their diapers and stuff and bathe and, like, use it like a pool. <laughs> <laughs> there were chickens. Uh. One, one guy chicken-wired off his uh, balcony, uh, off the, uh, the apartment. But it wasn't his balcony. Yeah. It he, was shared space. You know, in apartments, you have shared space in the back right, there. Right, right. He had a balcony, like the little wrought iron uh, that was his. patio, because yeah, right. it was a ground floor. It wasn't a balcony. It was a wrought iron patio. But he chicken wired off, like, a whole area around that and just filled it with chickens. <laughs> there were chickens in this garden. And I'm living there. I'm I'm living there. And like, I know you didn't say shit to some Colombian. Of course I didn't. Chicken wire. Did he go out and slaughter them right in front of you for his <laughs> evening dinner? A couple of times there'd be a few missing, and then there were new ones. So you knew he was just slitting their throat and you heard a disturbance. In. Yeah, a little feathers blow by your fucking window. <laughs> but that's what uh, that's what we were doing. We were living wow. there, and it was a mile away from the mother's house, and a couple of miles away from the station. And it was all, you know, it was all the, my wife's uh, doing. Like Ooh, what she said, that's what I did because I was just coasting through life. I was constantly waiting for something better, but doing really nothing to try to get it. Like the whole radio thing. I would have been in Huntington, New York, a tin knocker, installing air conditioning and heating, and just doing that, hoping something came along. And you know what? Something just happened to drop in my lap. <laughs> radio. It was just complete luck of the draw that it happened. Uh, but I still would have been there. Uh, that's and so then the whole thing that happened with... Uh, with uh, the apartment out there, is she got that one, and I was like, "Yeah, fine, I'll live with the Colombians in Ashland, a mile away from." Were you just town. trying to save money? We weren't making a lot, but we were... I really wasn't making a lot, and nothing. You know, obviously, I I was brand new. It was my first radio gig. Opie's been in it for for years at this point, so obviously he was getting paid more than I was. They weren't even sure I was going to work out. You know, it was one of those things. I thought I'd be back tin knocking again. I thought it would be right. a goof to do radio for a while. So Opie was making more than me. I was making at that time. Less. I got hired to do radio for less than I was making in construction. So yeah, I had I, I had no so money. Was your wife just trashing this dream every day? Uh, yeah, actually, she almost uh, almost didn't want have she almost have fucked me up do the it. whole thing because she wanted me to call now. Now this the GM to the WAF uh, throws out an offer, and it is for less money than I was making. I think I was making twenty. I was making twenty nine thousand a year doing construction. This is a 95. Removing asbestos. Yeah, exactly. And and he was offering me 25,000 like to do radio. Now I'm like, fine. I'll take the hit because I don't know what's going to happen. And Brucey e said to us, boys, if it works out in a few months, don't worry, Anthony. We'll bring you up. And we both took the hit, by the way. I, was making, yeah. I wasn't making much more than Anthony no. after many years in radio. You, uh, radio Plus to sit here and shoot the shit. Right. right. Or fucking install in... Right. Air conditioners. Exactly. And I said to Anthony, I'm like, this is a star. Trust me on this. We'll get more money. You know, we just got to establish ourselves. You know? And she could work. It was like, you know, right. she go out and get a job, which she did. And I explained, too, we'll make some side money possibly with gigs and stuff. Yeah. Whatever. So I was like, don't worry about it. You'll get it. So I, I go, uh, uh, schnookums, I, uh, I got the offer. Big dream to do radio when I go to Boston. How much? Uh, it was all about well, the money. Was your hat in your hand? Yes. Yeah, I was <laughs> I was crinkling my hat in my hands all nervously <laughs> working it. <laughs> it's like, uh, well, it's $25,000 uh, a year, but, but the BU came out for but. Nope. Can't do it. We cannot do that. It just doesn't work out. Uh, Call him and tell him you can't do it for less than uh, what you were making. Yes, Poopsie. And there I am on the phone with Brucey e. Mittman. Uh, Bruce, yeah, look great. We had a great time. Uh, but look, I'm going to need a little more money uh, for this. I just can't move up. I said, yeah. And she's like right next to me. Uh, she was the worst when it came to this. She had like, no, uh, no bargaining she, position there whatsoever. None. So Brucey e. brings had no it up clue to, of the upside. It was either staying, you know, uh, installing air conditioners yeah. or go into radio with the potential to make ridiculous money. Yeah. She just how, never saw it that way. How many superstars, both men and women, 
just in a bad relationship. People could like win an Oscar. Yeah. I like fucking you know seating people at like an Applebee's. Yep. Just because. Yeah, just because. No, no, no. You're, you're not doing that part. No, you're we not can't doing it. afford it. Acting is silly. Yeah. And you're gonna get a real job. There's Grammy winning singers and fucking yeah. people that are just talented. Working at Dunkin' Donuts. Yep. Eking it out. <laughs> oh my god. No, I remember like when when I was thinking about doing stand up, I didn't have the balls to even think I could do because I didn't know anybody in entertainment. And you literally, I'm working in this this warehouse and I'm. You know, to just sit there and say, I want to be a comedian. I'm just thinking yeah. of trashing that I would get for right. you. Know, take a right. fucking warehouse pallet over my head. <laughs> so I'm not going to say anything. I'm hey, the guy it. wants to be a comedian. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just go and load the truck, you douchebag. <laughs> hey, funny man. The only thing funny about you is all that crap. <laughs> so it just so happened I was working with this guy who was really into comedy. One night we were, uh, we were hanging out after work. Remember that show, Stand Up Spotlight? Yeah, with uh, Rosie O'Donnell, uh -huh. right at the end of that. Was that 80s. the one with the brick wall? That was one that. Actually, <laughs> no, this one actually had like the uh, the little Christmas lights in the background to oh, be stars, yeah. okay? Because right. all these sure. hacks were on their way, right? <laughs> and uh, we were just watching, and he just he he just happened to say to me, he "Goes look at these guys, Bill. These guys suck. We're funnier than these guys. You know, one of these days I'm gonna take a shot at Jack Daniels, and I'm gonna fucking get up there." And the second he said that, all of a sudden I was like. It just kind of put me on that track, like fuck, I want to do that. But I, if I swear to God, if I never had that conversation with them, yeah, yeah, yeah I'd be like driving a fucking UPS truck, yeah, for real. It's I'm like the Kevin James character, <laughs> <laughs> for real. Yeah, seven hundred million dollars. It's just uh, so. How do we get to this point? You get, I don't know. Oh, but wait, wait, wait. quickly. Brucey e came back to me and said I could give you twenty-seven five, mm -hmm. but that's it. And uh, you know, I was like, I, I got to take this. So I boy, I really put my foot down there and said, "Yeah, twenty-seven five. Don't worry, it'll all work." Opie said that more money will come in, and every so finally, <laughs> was you know, I right? Yeah. Was I right? Of course, you were right. Thank you. And then uh, the real kicker. Fast forward uh, nine years later in court to have Dominic Barbara uh, telling me how integral a part she played in me uh, getting to where I am in radio and how she deserves bullshit. so much money. Did they, throw out, did they throw out the support words? Oh, everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh. The support, the, you know, uh, it pretty much was, if it wasn't for her, I would not be in radio. Meanwhile, you know, I almost didn't end up in radio. Because <laughs> she didn't see the, the dream, the vision. Yeah, the vision. That's, that's how it works out. That's the wonder of marriage. At times, she was definitely a hindrance. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Because Anthony was miserable. Oh! Because he was getting yelled at. Like, I, I can't stress. I mean, we were on that a might... rocket ship. We were going into the city to do this radio show that was exploding. We were doing magazine articles. We're going to be on TV doing this. I mean, things were really rocking for us. And yeah. and he's getting yelled at because from 9 to 9.15, he didn't, like, vacuum and... And, uh, Vacuuming was my job too. And, and clean yeah, out vacuum. the litter box. Jesus Christ! There was <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, fast forward six hours later in that day, and the world is ours. But at home, it was a nightmare. That kind of worked out for me though, because when I was there at the station, I, it was such a good time for me. Like I was away, and having so much fun. <laughs> I never went home. I swear to you, I would I would go. I, we were talking about. I, I would start drinking. At noon. Get Ben At here. noon. We were talking about this last night because we went to the Rolling Stones. Yeah. We'll get into that in a little while here. But uh, XM threw a whole party for their salespeople from all over the country. Uh -huh. So I went because I, I wanted to check out the Stones. You decided not to go last night. Ben was there, Steve, Eric, and others. And uh, it was a schmooze fest. Yeah. And everyone's asking, where's Anthony? Of course and, like, they are. Anthony's home, whatever. He doesn't do this type of thing anymore. Whatever. I actually had plans. I wanted to go. Right. I was actually but out then, last night. But uh, then... We were uh, we were telling Lindsay actually the, the old Anthony oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. about the, the old, old Anthony because she only knows the new Anthony. I'm like you have no idea the the old Anthony would be at that bar not only not only drinking a beer it would be a beer shot beer shot beer shot beer shot smoke 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 <laughs> beer shot beer shot beer smoke 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 smoke. Yeah. Like, he's a completely different person. I like my captains and cokes. And, That's what I really and, enjoy. And then other people started coming around, and, and Ben and I were explaining the old Anthony. Like, Anthony would start, he wouldn't drink the first hour of the show. Like, from yeah, 3 to 4, true. he wouldn't drink. But from 4 to 7 in the afternoon, forget about Pounding. It. Because Pounding beer. The beer sponsors would send over pallets of beer to the studio. They set us up with refrigerators 
uh, just outside the studio that were packed with beer. Dude, these Sam Adams, Budweiser, Coors, all of them came on board, and all of them sent Dude, beer. Dude, we, we were a radio company's dream. We had every beer company wanted on our show. Yeah. And we used to have two fridges. We had a fridge for food and a fridge for beer. And then the fridge for food got filled up with beer as well. So now we had two fridges with beer in them. Then the other companies would start bringing their own fridges in because they noticed. Like Sobe Beverages brought in this big double door thing you see in a deli, you know, uh -huh. where you open it up and pull your sodas out and stuff. <laughs> it was giant. That thing ended up full of beer. <laughs> full of was, beer. And then the, the beer guys would, beer. would come in with almost a pallet of beer. Like, yeah. well, like small, you know, a pallet's a, uh, an exaggeration, but a lot of beer. And they would uh -huh. come in right into our office. Where you guys want this, and they would notice that they couldn't keep their their beer cold, which means we might not drink it on the air, which means we might not give the extra push to that beer. Yeah. So they would bring it in their own fridges. We, we got, had, at the end, I think we had four fridges in the office. We would get 12 cases of Budweiser one week, 12 cases of Sam the next week, then Coors was like six cases, so <laughs> I mean, it was ridiculous. Sounds like the Motley Crue, like the beginning of their Behind the Music. It <laughs> absolutely <laughs> is. We, uh, we have a lot of interest in a book, and I think we're finally going to go down that road. Because the... Uh, Oh, yeah. And then uh, then the Jägermeister machine showed up. Jaeger. We were talking about Jaeger, and uh, the people from Jägermeister come up, and they bring one of those machines that deep freezes shots of Jägermeister. It's a big refrigerator. So you, you hit the tap, put the shot glass underneath, and you get a shot of Jaeger that's at like 33 degrees. <laughs> Just above freezing, yeah. So, wow. so now we're doing frozen Jaeger shots. This is while we're working. This was on the air. I barely Nobody stepped in and upper management like, hey. No, what? they were well, afraid of us. No, why? The ratings were going. <laughs> they Bill, were, yep. the ratings were going up, 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 up. So they were just keeping their mouth shut. It's like whatever. Here, here's what Something. the deal was. The rest of the station was tanking so badly that we were the only show that was keeping these people their jobs. Like, you can't be the general manager, program director of a station that's c consistently in the shitter. They blow you out and bring someone else in to try to get it up to speed. Look at what they've done at NEW since we were gone. Yeah. They've been through so many people. There's yep. so many bosses because that's what you do. Right. Uh, they knew that without our ratings, their jobs were done. So they were petrified to shake us up or let, you know, rock the boat. We hired a bartender. <laughs> we hired a bartender <laughs> to come there. in. We it had that shot bad. girls. We had girls with the test tubes and the shots <laughs> on walking Fridays. around on, on Fridays. Fridays doing, and the boss is there. Hey, guys, how you doing? It got to the point. There were so many people around when we were doing our show, we didn't know half of them. And, it was a were, bullet train heading toward a, a concrete a wall. They were drinking our beer, doing our shots. We didn't care. We oh. just didn't care. And Anthony, how many beers a day were you drinking? Let's see. We'd start uh, an hour after the show started. Me and Ben. <laughs> Four to seven. We'd, st we'd start drinking. By seven o'clock, I'd probably finished off about eight beers. And then we'd hit the office because I didn't want to go home. We'd hit the <laughs> office where I would play video games, uh, drink more. And then the second Opie left the office, it would turn into a fog machine. The whole me, stinky, everyone would light up <laughs> and just smoke beers, shots, and computer games until ten o'clock at night. When I would finally call up and go, yeah, all the meetings are over. I'm yeah. coming home. <laughs> well, and then, then I'd get in my car, my paperwork, and well, just depression would sink in as I was on the LIE going, oh, no, I'm heading home. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, fuck. This is, oh, this boy. This is day wow. out. Day in and day out. And then I get home. The garbage is full. The, this, the, the cat box. The, go up and feed the cats. and. <laughs> You would do Ron and Fez's show, too, because of that. Oh, right. Ron and Fez come on after us, and I would just sit in on their show. I would be, be like, yeah, I'm going to hang out. And it was the Ron, Fez, and Anthony show. I would <laughs> it was, he was the third member of the Ron and Fez show. Yeah, yeah. Well, then back just didn't then, go home. Back then, they were on at 11 o'clock at night in the beginning. Yeah. They did a, before they moved to 7 to 11. Mm -hmm. so, those were, yeah. so yesterday, oh, being at the Rolling Stones thing, it was kind of funny that Anthony wasn't there. And, you know, at, we, we joke about how he just goes home after the show and doesn't do much anymore because it's not the same. That's Anthony. it. We know. That's right. So I don't know where, I don't know how we got to this point. But I think it was the Renee Zellweger mm. marriage thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Somehow yeah. that uh, spilled into this. 
Anytime anyone talks about marriage, I just get it in my head. It's like, never again. Yeah, but you know what's funny about that is if you actually told that on TV, you would be considered like women bashing. And oh, yeah. Because you, you, I was sitting there listening to that. That was, that was why that was so fascinating, listening to that story, because you always hear the other ones. Yeah. Like the women going, and then he beat me, <laughs> and then he did this, and blah, 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 blah. And I they, was a prisoner. Yeah, and they, they'll, Oprah and all them, will, for hours, will listen to that because <laughs> yeah. they're just like, oh. Just obviously you see a man is stronger than a woman, so it just seems to yeah. make sense. They don't put any weight on like a woman's, right. like that psychological ability of them to mind fuck you. Yeah, uh, that's all it was. I'm I was saying, not saying that they post. all do that, but I'm saying the story you have, a lot of people have, but they, they never... Yeah. It depends how far he wants to go with this, man. He's got a million great stories. I was just always on coast. That was my whole life back then, was just, all right... Don't shake things up. Let me just coast through this. That's hilarious because you had the exact opposite relation. My mother, my dad used to always be cursing at my mother. We used to be going down to the bus stop, me and my two other brothers. I'd be like first grade, first grade, third, and kindergarten. We'd be standing down there. We didn't have any air conditioner. So my, the windows would be open, and my dad would just be cursing out my mother. As we're like 20 <laughs> feet away at the bus stop. <laughs> hey, you goddamn fucking bitch. You've been doing the same shit for years. Oh, that's bullshit, Linda. That is fucking bullshit. And we're like, this <laughs> kid's just like jump ropes, like looking at us and stuff. We're trying to play it off like, hey, what, what, what else that's coming from? The drapes are blowing out the window. He's yelling so loud. Exact, Maybe it is the upbringing. Cause exact my, opposite. See, my father was that way, too. My father was always, you know, he was a real prick just yelling all the time. Bah, 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 motherfucker. This. I remember, yeah. and, and I've told the story on the air, uh, uh, the vivid memory as a child is an argument during dinner where uh, his plate of spaghetti and meatballs was just launched against the wall. <laughs> like he picked it up and threw it, and then they just start yelling at each other. And I'm a little kid sitting there looking at the spaghetti sauce just sliding <laughs> slowly down the old wall with the bell telephone next to it on the yeah. wall. Just like, it was this horrifying moment as a child. Maybe, you know, I grew up and decided, I'm never going to argue back. I'll just be this guy. <laughs> yes, pussy. Yeah. You know, we'll, yes, dear. We'll play that going into break because that's a great, great production Just piece. to avoid confrontation. That was wow. me. Wow. Avoid I, yeah, I had, confrontation I had guy. I had the same shit. Let's go to Kevin in Minnesota. Kevin. What's up, boys? Hey, Kevin. Hey, man. What's up, Jimmy's replacement? Uh, it's Bill Burr, everyone. <laughs> we, we haven't introduced Bill What's today. up, man? How you doing? Bill Burr, let me give you one thing about Bill Burr. His uh, half-hour comedy special is on HBO tonight at midnight. I'm hearing yes, really tonight. good things about Bill Burr's comedy yeah, special. Yeah, it's called Jimmy's Replacement One Night Stay <laughs> on, uh, on HBO. <laughs> Check it out tonight at midnight on uh, HBO, and then it's going to run a bunch after that, I'm, I'm sure. And Bill getting raves for uh, his uh, job yesterday, sitting in. Awesome. Absolutely. Oh, I cool. read a awesome. lot, and... Uh, Getting rave reviews. Very good. Kevin, what do you have for the show? Well, I was uh, kind of wondering what uh, your ex-old lady, which kind of sounds like a bitch, personally, <laughs> but uh, what did she do while you were uh, at work earning uh, an income while she was sitting there stroking her five pussies? Well, let me tell you, uh, up in uh, Ashland, Mass., she did work. She was, uh, I guess she worked at a Papa Gino's uh, when we first got there. And then... Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it depends how far he wants to go with this. Oh, see, I didn't realize she had such a huge leg to stand on. Well, that was, you know, bringing in the Papa Gino's money. And then there was... Uh, this is while we were becoming, uh, i got to say it again, rock and roll radio stars. Yeah. Go ahead. Then uh, the job, uh, she got the job at the liquor store, which, uh, oof, Wow. Like putting a pedophile in charge of a nursery. <laughs> that was, uh, that was <laughs> wowie kazowie. But at least she drove herself to work, so that was a good thing. No, At least no. she didn't have to worry uh, about that. Well, that would have been a good thing. <laughs> she, she never got a license. She never got a license to drive. Yeah. Oh, so so wow. what, what I had to deal with was driving her everywhere. Everywhere she had to go. I had to drive. She's just bitching the whole the so whole time. It was there was a lot of that. Yes, a lot of the 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 arguments and and uh, I would drive her to work and then have to drive me to work and then she would get off of work before I did because I worked till seven. When she'd get off of work, what she would do is grab one of those uh, boxes of wine and uh, bring it to her mom's house, which was less than a half mile from the liquor store. Now I would have to instead of just Getting done with my day and driving home 
having my slippers and pipe waiting for me, I would have to drive to the mother's house, which was kind of far. It, was, it wasn't it was that far, but it was out of the way. I had to pass my house. It was far enough to be a hassle after right. a while. I had to pass my house in order to get to her house, which I didn't want to do after work. It's 7 o'clock uh. at night. I just wanted to, you know, go home, wind down, or maybe stop at Green Acres over there in Ashland, down a few drinks or something like that. But I had to go to the mother's house, where they would both sit now, uh, and it wasn't a immediately leave thing. Now I had to sit in the basement with her and her mother as they watched uh, videos of, of poppers, that day's right? General Hospital, yeah. uh, Days of Our Lives, and Friends. So now I'm sitting on the couch. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. This Until was... 10, <laughs> from 7 to like 10. I'm just picturing your whole posture like you're oh, dude. Head, head down, shoulder slumped. Dude, it was a nightmare. And this was every night. So then I, it would be like 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, I I'd caught up on General Hospital and <laughs> Days of Our Lives and Friends. And... Uh, they would just get sauced on the wine, the box of wine, and uh, I would get tanked on my uh, Jack and uh, Coke or, or Captain Morgan and Coke, and then uh, hop in the car and drive. <laughs> you know? So what would you do? Were you, Obi, were you trying to be like the, the friend here going... He to lived gently it. Gently nudge him to like, dude, what the fuck is I, uh, wrong with you? I was just the friend that dragged him out of there. I don't know. We yeah. had fun at work and stuff. At work, and, like I said, work was such a pisser and, and that I don't even think he... Yeah, he knew what was going on because, you know, we'd go out... Uh, the, our outings were just classic when we would go. Yeah. Like, it would be open, go, hey, Aunt, let's go to, um, uh, what was that place called? Mother Anna's? Mother Anna's, sure. In the North End. They'd go, hey, let's go to Mother Anna's uh, for dinner tonight. All right. Uh, Jen, <laughs> we're going to uh, Mother Anna's with uh, Opie, Sandy, and uh, Jay from Framingham. All right. Oh, Mom wants to go. What? Uh -huh. What? Mom wants to go. Yeah, but it's just kind of an his mother-in-law had to go hanging out yeah, thing. Yeah, but, but we, we want to have fun. But we just want to have fun. <laughs> she had to go pretty much everywhere we went. Yeah, and she was cool to a point, but but they but they really enjoyed the drinking. So it kind of got a little. We'd all be in the middle of like having a good time, and her mother would out of nowhere just go, "I want to go home." <laughs> And and we'd be like, right as the strippers oh. coming out of the cake, <laughs> <laughs> blow out the candles for a second. <laughs> I want to go home. Oh. So now you know we're in Boston, and she lives in in Ashland. So now I got a far drive. I got to hop in the car and drive back to Ashland. <laughs> and and that right was, when it was getting good. Right when like we were hanging, we're, it's it's getting fun. <laughs> and, we're all buzzed, and now the comedy is really flowing. We're all laughing our asses off. Unbelievable. That's a and that God rest her soul, by the way, for those of you that don't know, Judy passed in, Judy uh, passed in uh, a few months ago. July, and, uh, you know, she was fun. She was a lot of fun. I mean, she was definitely a pisser. But, um, you know, as a mother-in-law type thing. Uh, Judy's now with Chester. That's right. And she always wanted that, so. Yeah. Rest yeah. in peace. But, uh. It was it was a hell of a lifestyle I was leading there during radio show during our appearances out it was just a friggin night we would oh my god remember the Kahlua girls and think we're doing shots and the, girls are inviting us to go skinny dipping <laughs> the, the Kahlua girls you ever see these liquor gir girls promo girls oh, they yeah. walk around well, like, like the Budweiser the Budweiser girls, girls and and the Kahlua girls were dressed in like these little tight skirts. And stuff, and they're like, "Yeah, why? We're all getting hammered together. We're both we're, we're, we're both, getting paid like uh, I guess a hundred bucks a night to we be were there. We're both assholes because we were both in uh, shaky relationships to say the least. But we're good guys. And, good guys. And we're doing this appearance, and we're like becoming rock stars. And these uh, young Kahlua girls are just hammered, and we're doing shots with them. And all of a sudden, they're like, you guys want to go skinny dipping? <laughs> <laughs> this one Kahlua girl comes up to me." She comes up to me, and she's got pigtails and braces. <laughs> and she goes, I really like you. <laughs> you want? And she's, like, grabbing me. And she, and she goes, we're all going skinny Kitty dipping at the lake, because we're really close to the lake. And I want you to come with me. Uh, I've got to go home <laughs> to the cats and the garbage and the vacuum and the box of wine and friends in General Hospital. No, I can't go skinny dipping with you. We were the worst. 
oh. we would end up driving home pretty much crying to each oh, other. Like, I'd be steering with my rod. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was a great <laughs> gig, Opie. We're like, do you realize what we just said no to? Oh, how many times I wanted to throw that in her face during one of those things. It's like, why don't you take the cop drive to... Do you know what I'm offered? Do you know what I'm offered when we do those fucking bar gigs? <laughs> It was, oh. I could be fucking a girl with pigtails pig and braces. And braces. <laughs> a Jager That's old girl. enough to drink. Barely. Ah. Yeah. yeah. That's funny, the spaghetti thing. My mother, one time, my dad was, he, she just finally couldn't take anymore. She was feeding my baby sister a bowl of Apple Jacks, <laughs> and she finally just took... You just, always remember the food. Didn't throw the bowl. Just went like this in the milk and the <laughs> Apple Jacks. Went flat. My dad has like a cowlick too in the front, so it's perfect. Glanced off his head. It looked like the Kennedy assassination. Glances off his head and just sprayed across the wall behind it, dude. It was great. There was all this milk and apple jacks, and there was fucking silence. Like, oh my god, she finally fought back. And my dad didn't know what to do. He's got like cereal in the front of his fucking hair, and he just walked out. And all of us are going like, that's what you gotta do, Mom. Anytime he does it, you just take a bowl of cereal, you fucking throw it in his face. Oh, is that funny? Did it, did it maintain its bowl-like shape for a few seconds? Oh, uh, yeah, but before that's... it struck him. Oh, it was great. <laughs> like slow motion, you can kind of see it coming. Oh, God, yeah, that is fantastic. Back, back and to the left. Oh, that is great. Oh, but then, but then, of course, the relationship went after that, like within ten seconds, she's cleaning it up, right, washing the wall, and then it goes right back to everything yeah, where it's supposed to be. Yeah, got thrown out of whack for a second, but yeah, oh, that he, is great. He regains his footing with his milk-soaked hair. He, he probably knew he couldn't fight back because you can't be very tough with apple jacks in oh. your hair and the milk. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Michigan and say hi That's to John. Great. John, what's going on? What's going on, fellas? Hey, hey man. Hey, I wanted to ask Anthony. Uh, when his wife took all his money out of the bank and they got divorced, what did, whatever she go on to do, did she ever go on and get married or anything like that? And is he in like spite of her? No, I don't know. I don't. I don't know uh, much of anything she's doing. I do know that um, the money that I've earned doing radio has bought her a house. <laughs> I know she has a house. <laughs> and uh, she finally got her driver's license, and so she's. Ah. Uh, oh, did she? Uh, no. Oh, you don't know? No, I, that was a joke. Oh, she didn't. Yeah. No. I was going to say, so what you did. I don't have to buy the car. No, because after... <laughs> good. Well, then she was, like, just taking public uh, transportation and stuff and buses. Yeah. Whew. Well, there was something that went on, like, when she was uh, a teen or something. She got in a car and went to drive it and, like, came out of a parking lot and went right into a tree. <laughs> so, like, ever since then, she just figured she wouldn't get a license, so... Yeah, I had to drive her everywhere. <laughs> Nightmare. All right, we should take a break. Oh, uh, wow, that was therapeutic. <laughs> yes, that was weird. No, that's not is. how we were going to start the show. That's, yeah, that's why you got to listen to the show every day. You never know. We don't even know what we're doing on a daily basis. You think that was written on one of these papers that are in front of us? Hell of no. Not. All right, it's the Opie and Anthony show. Bill Burr sitting in for Jim Norton once again today. Very funny guy. He's got his uh, half-hour comedy special tonight on HBO at midnight. Make sure you check it out. Um. All right, I guess we'll break and we'll figure out what we do next. How's, how's that? Sure. A little Stephen Lynch song because it's appropriate. And then the then the War of the Kumias thing that Steve put together. <laughs> right. We got a lot more comedy right here, so stay there. Hi, you're checking out the Opie and Anthony program on XM Satellite Radio. The Rolling Stones. We all went to the Rolling Stones show last night at the Meadowlands. We got to get Ben in here and Martini Steve. There was a little problem. I guess we should get into it. Eric is very, very pissed off uh, this morning. Extremely uh, pissed off. Hey, quickly, Jacob from Jersey is wondering if, uh, right when the divorce papers were assigned, <gasps> if I screamed, FREEDOM! <laughs> <laughs> After my guts were taken out. That was a happy day for you. Yeah. It was a very happy day. <clears throat> certainly was. So, uh, uh, most of the gang today, very sluggish. Anthony yeah. went home and... Uh, Took it easy. Yeah. We all went down to the Meadowlands for the Rolling Stones show. And we had to be there at like 5 because we did like a VIP party for XM. They, they flew in salespeople from all over the country. Supposedly, they're all showing up here today. Yeah, yeah. right. I don't think that's happening. These guys like to drink, man. Holy. Oh, 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 hey, Steve. Steve. Hi, fellas. What's up, Steve? Hey, How are you? <laughs> All I know is uh, never gets old. No, Will and the gang got <laughs> hammered. 
But they promised they were going to take, uh, bring a busload of some of these XM people from around the country over here today to check out the uh, the show because they're all oh, yeah. big fans of the show. Yeah, Will will definitely make it. He's a trooper. Yeah, but, he will. And hopefully the attractive sales girl will come by, who's uh, got some fans here already. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, Will can tell some of those stories that he was telling us last night. Mm. But uh, sounds like a good time was had by all. Great time. Or, well, maybe not all, but... It was an unbelievable uh, time. <laughs> Alanis Morissette warmed up, but no one saw her perform. No one cared. No one cares about the opening gig anymore? Well, well they have great acts on other parts yeah. of the tour. Metallica's opening, The White Stripes, Pearl Jam. Motley but Crew. Why couldn't we get Metallica? Wow, you're going to get the Rolling yeah. Stones. Uh, Metallica's, you doing their, Metallica's doing their hometown gig in San Francisco. What yeah. like, uh, you get Alanis Morissette? And out of all the bands <laughs> that have come out of Jersey and New York, you know, why couldn't they get one of the, like, a Bon Jovi or somebody Good just question. to step up and say, yeah, what the hell, I'll, we'll warm up for you guys. And you got to respect that you're in your 60s and you don't, you're not scared to follow Metallica. That's yeah. pretty impressive. They got nothing to worry. The Stones still play great. I mean, let no... me tell you something. I love Metallica, but uh, James Hetfield as a front man compared to Mick Jagger, you, you, you can't even compare the two. Can't even compare the two. It's two different things. Last time I saw Metallica, <laughs> Come on. oh, it was when we saw Metallica. Oh yeah. Oh Hetfield. God, with Jim. That's James right. Hetfield, he just seemed like not attached to the audience. You know, he sounded great and all that, but when it came, to, you know, to to uh, just, uh, I don't know, talking to the crowd and all that, he just seemed kind of distant. Like he He's was never been a work-the-crowd kind of guy. It's a stand there and... Yeah, he's got a he's got an insert city name here monologue that he does. Yeah, right. You know. So Alanis Morissette, I guess, went on. I don't know. I didn't see her. No one did. I mean, there was like ten people in the crowd. No joke, man. Well, wow. It, it, they were just starting to file yeah. in when she started, yeah. and then... Uh, <laughs> And then this is the new thing at concerts. And then it's the hour break. An hour. An hour between Alanis Morissette and then when the Stones finally hit the stage. Not like that in the old days. Because you got to drink up, man. Yeah. Got to drink up. Got to get your beers in. They pretty much just changed the equipment over. And then the uh, the act would come on, the, the headliner. Remember, it used to be like a pit crew when we were growing up? Yeah. One band would get off, and the other band would just be pushing the drums drum sets right off the back of the stage. The opening band would get japped. They'd have the uh, the uh, headline band's equipment all set up, covered with sheets, and then the opening band would have a little spot front stage, and they'd get done, and then uh, the headliner would yeah. come on. Well, Being dwarfed by the drum kit of yeah, the headlining. Yeah, huge right. drum kit, and then there's this little <laughs> freaking drum set. Well, you can't cover up the Rolling Stones uh, stage. <laughs> oh, no. my God. It was like ten stories higher. or Did something. Did they have all the walkways and stuff? Oh, yeah. Mick? Oh, yeah. yeah. That guy runs around like a maniac. Well, that's still. what I was gonna say. I, I, last time I saw the Stones was 1989, and I'm thinking, uh, come on, they ha they must have lost something mm. since 1989. The new CD's getting uh, really good reviews and stuff, and uh, went last night. I was blown away. Mick Jagger's what, 62? 62. We, he's 62 mm. years old, running around like he's in his 30s, no problem the wow. whole time. The whole he's just ripped. He's cut. He's he knows he's cut too because a few songs he's pulling up his shirt like he's hot but he's leaving it up so the girls uh, could check out his uh, his ab work and he's in his sixties. God damn! And there was like at least three generations in the audience at least. Yeah. There were gr I mean there were women walking around you're like wow that's a grandma there's no there's no mistaking that that woman is a grandma. All the, the Rolling Stones where. And all the I way, love them. All the way down to girls in their early 20s. You know, it was the whole yeah. gamut, man. Did Jeff listen mm -hmm. to people's awful stories around you? I saw them in 1972. <laughs> <laughs> I blew the original rhythm guitars <laughs> at the Fillmore. <laughs> Back when I had teeth. But uh, completely blown away, man, completely. It was just a great show, an absolute great show. And I noticed that. Uh, the, did you, anyone else notice the planes were flying over all night long? Yeah, planes yeah. were going right overhead. R oh, yeah. I mean, right through you know the top of the whatever above, yep. obviously, but right split in the stadium. And you can yeah. I, I I you can almost feel what the pilot was saying to you know the people on board. You know, the Rolling Stones are you know playing right now. If you want to look left below, here left. Yeah. Oh yeah, because these things were going right <laughs> over the stadium, man. <laughs> One after another. One. Yeah. I mean, every single one. Every every minute, it was another plane flying right overhead. Yeah, they did the same thing when the uh, the Who was playing over there years oh, really? ago. Yeah, it's kind of annoying though. Right. You want to listen to a song and 
Mm. Well, Mick Jagger's a, yeah. Mick Jagger's such a showman. I think he knew that was going on because he was kind of pointing up to the planes a few times, almost like I know they're probably you know telling the, the people to look down at this point. So he's looking up. It must suck. You got the middle seat on your way to like Seattle. Yeah, <laughs> like six hours. You look down, there's sixty thousand people having the time of their life. Uh, he's just leaning over to Keith, pointing at the plane and going, "I could buy that." <laughs> <laughs> Charlie Watts looked like he uh, he's not going to make it. Yeah. He's just tapping away on his drum. Then he had the big casino. Uh, he did, right? He did. He beat it. He beat, he beat the big casino, oh, he, Tony. He beat uh, yeah? the big casino. Yeah, he throat cancer. Yeah, he beat yeah. it. Wow. And Keith Richards uh, still plays great. Yeah. You know, How's he looking these days? <laughs> like, a, like an alien. <laughs> he looks like an alien yeah. with a wig, basically. And Ron Wood just looks like a gay guy. I, I, he's wearing girl shirts and stuff. Like an old queen. I don't know what, it, <laughs> I don't know what his playing. deal is. I have no clue. Do you know? Yeah, he's, no, he's married and has kids. Yeah, he does. Holy crap, yeah. man. He was wearing, like, uh, you know, girls, uh, what's that one store, uh, Express or es Express? <laughs> Wasn't it him that his son was going out with the dog? Nah, that was Bill Wyman. That was Bill Wyman, okay. Yeah, yeah, Ron I was wondering who it was. His son was going out with the mother of the daughter that Bill Wyman was oh, fucking. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. some kind of sordid, horrific story. Yeah. Well, Bill Wyman, I mean, he started that dating that girl when she was like 12 or something, some ridiculous yeah. thing, and then yeah. he married her, and then they were divorced in like two years. Yeah. yeah. And he, he decided. He, he trades them in at like 19. Yeah, he, did, he yeah. decided he didn't need to do this Stones thing I anymore. Was great. It was a Kahlua girl with braces and pigtails. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it wasn't like seeing, you know, Kiss at the end of their career, where it was like it, it was almost like kind of a goof to me to see Kiss. The, the Rolling Stones are still making it happen, and then the stage just kind of lifted up, and they uh, moved the stage completely to the middle of Giant Stadium and did four songs out there. That's something. The mechanics behind stage shows these days. It was pretty cool, and God, as it's damn. slowly moving, the crowd is just losing their minds. But uh, a lot of, of the money the parking lot is, is ha half of the parking lot is tractor trailers to haul this massive set around. It's amazing. You just you just don't get an idea you, you get an idea of how massive this thing is just when you hit the parking lot and you see, you know, just the per the whole perimeter of the first layer of parking spaces is all semis. Yeah. Because the the the, the stage set is is as high as Giant Stadium is and as wide as as what 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 is it like the first? It weighs it weighs 150 tons. It's the biggest stage ever constructed in rock and roll. Steve is actually able to land in his seat. He bypassed the parking lot completely and landed his car right in his own seat. No parking problems for Steve. There weren't. <laughs> but anyway, Eric is very pissed off. Yeah, now there. Eric is pissed. E -rock. Now you would think, when I heard, because right when I walked in, I think it was Ben, said, uh, Eric is really pissed. So I go, okay, the hundred grand thing was a scam. Right. Uh, turns out, no. The hundred grand thing is not a scam. Turns out Eric had one of the best days of his life and one of the worst days of his life, all in the same day. So I'm thinking, start out great, ended really, really bad. You win a hundred grand. Well, all right, let's quickly cover that. Uh, was it the Post or the Daily News? Daily, Daily News. You better know. <laughs> the Daily News had a contest uh, in their paper uh, a few months back. You might remember this because it made the national news. Uh, it's some kind of... What was the game called? Do you remember? Scratch and match. Scratch and match. They're still doing it on the front yeah, page. Yeah, there's a new one coming today. out on it Sunday. It's all new scratch and match. So what you would do is scratch some numbers off. If they match the numbers, corresponding numbers, by some uh, money values, uh, like a lottery ticket, you win that amount. There was a misprint on these scratch and match tickets. So a shitload of people uh, across New York that bought the, the paper scratched the number and realized, holy shit, I won $100,000. And they were only supposed to have maybe four or five winners, right? To oh, total, yeah. Total. Out of the whole contest. But instead, there are hundreds because of the misprint. Hundreds of winners uh, because they, they misprinted one of the numbers. So uh, their solution to this whole thing was, okay, write your name, address, all this crap, send it in, and we'll have a drawing well, this out was of after, all the people. This was after a lot of people lost their shit, protesting. Yeah. They all wanted their money. Well, we saw it on the news, and every story sounded like, I had my, my I had plans for that money already. I already spent it. I spent it. The Daily New Day can't uh, take people's dreams and step all over. <laughs> like they were entitled. And it was, I'm sorry, I don't know why. It was all black people that were protesting. Reverend Al came out uh, for them. Uh, against the Daily News. Celine Dion. Celine. Screaming. Why? <laughs> buy these people. At least buy them a kayak. <laughs> Let them touch the paper. Let them touch the money. <laughs> <laughs> they could break through the wall. Get the money from the Daily News. 
awful woman. And uh, he, he, they, they figured they would take all the people that uh, thought they won. The hundreds put, of people. Put them in a drawing. Right. And, and pick the money out of the proverbial hat. And whoever won gets uh, 100 grand. How many total winners out of the pick out of the hat did they have? Five. Five total winners. Out of, uh, I mean, I don't know how many people were in it. Do you? Do you know how many no, people know how many entered? Many. It was a lot of pissed off people that thought they won 100 grand entered. Five people are picked out of this hat that win $100,000. Do you know who one of those people were? Our own hawk. Eric Nagel was the winner of $100,000. He won 100000 yesterday. From uh, the Daily News. Late in the show, Ben busted into the studio. Lily White, Eric Nagel. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what the other four people are. I want to know if they're white, because I am going to say that it is racially motivated. <laughs> So he won a hundred thousand. Eric's saying, "Shut up till I get my check, yeah. asshole." He gets it today. He gets it today. Do you? Is it a big giant one? No, they don't do that. Where are they presenting it? Um, it's being uh, it's certified. It's Wait. coming to sent to my house. Going to your go house for it. Yeah. Where do you live? <laughs> <laughs> Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> Well, last night he lived at the station, I think. We'll get to, into that in a second. Yeah, because now I, now I thought when, when I heard that he was pissed off, I assumed that it was a scam and he didn't win the 100 grand. And uh, no. I, I, I thought he was pissed at that. It turns out the Daily News came by, took uh, a nice picture of Eric and probably the other winners wherever they uh, live or did, work. Where did they take the picture? Uh, right here in the studio. In front in of the front ONA, of the son. ONA son, you motherfucker. You're great. Little promotion, too. That's good. And and they did they do a, a little quick interview with you about who you are and what you do? And no, there was no interview. They they just had the names and they just needed photos. That was it. They're doing some big. But it isn't thing usually Eric who works at blah blah blah. That will be blah. mentioned. Yeah, that I, will be mentioned. That will be mentioned. Eric from uh, the Opie and Anthony show. Very good. Right, and yeah. I think the picture is going to be in Sunday's Daily News. <laughs> Sunday's yeah. Daily News. Everyone picks that one up. We got to call David Hinckley. David Hinckley would write about this. Yeah, he'd write about it. One of our guys wins $100,000. Mm-hmm. So that's how his day started. And then he went to the Rolling Stones with us, and uh, he was left behind. And he's really mad at everyone, but I, 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 I can easily defend myself. You got, from the story I heard, you guys ditched him, <laughs> is what I'm getting. We didn't ditch you. In one of the most obscure places in the tri-state area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Meadowlands. <laughs> the Meadow. Here's the deal. I I drove to uh, the Stone Show. You drove? Yeah. It was Your like, own vehicle. It was Lindsay and I, Ben, and Eric. Mm -hmm. And we did the XM thing, meet and greet, blah, blah, blah. Everyone's drinking, having a good time, eating New York d'oeuvres, blowing off a uh, Alanis Morissette. And it, it's time to go to our seats. And mm -hmm. we have seats all over the place. First of all, I had no idea you weren't sitting in our section. I had no idea either. When we, when you guys were going in that area where you had those colored bracelets, right. they looked at my ticket and said, no, you're going this way. And you guys were already way down, so I couldn't even say anything <laughs> well, to you. Well, that's I'm going to start with that. Uh, no, you knew. You knew because you told me before. I said, I have a side seat. You guys have the floor. Yeah. Yes. And they said, but we're all going this way. Oh, well, they, well. They Look they at all the bracelets around. we had to wear yesterday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oof. I actually I had a got fourth on. one, too. There was a fourth one that I had, because you had one for the party and one for the floor. The cops everywhere. The security was... <laughs> yeah. was well, Eric had, like, one. Huh? You just well, had, like, one bracelet. Well, this is... <laughs> sit, sit in the back, stupid, written on the side. Wow. <laughs> no, this, I had a really this good just, seat. This just in from uh, Yahoo uh, Finance. They found out Eric won 100 grand. Hellman's stock up two points. <laughs> 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 oh, very good. Uh, I thought you were going to pick another product, but you did very, not. very good. Anthony. Uh, so we were leaving the party. Here's the first mistake you made, Eric, and we'll we'll let you, uh, you know, try to defend yourself here. We all went in the elevator together. Yeah, didn't we? Yes. What happened to you? Is this when you got there? No, after the party, we were way up in the, the, the box. Luxury box. Way above the stadium, partying and stuff. Of course you were. And then there was about 100 of us from XM. We all took the elevators, these massive elevators. Uh, you know, <clears throat> I don't know. There was We had to take, like, two elevators. But Eric was in the elevator with all of us. Mm -hmm. We're going down to now find our seats on the floor. Little did we know he wasn't on the floor. I, I did yeah. not know that, okay? And we started walking from the elevator toward our seats. We stopped to wait for you for at least five to ten minutes. At least. 
when we got off the elevator and we left, as we're going around the side, the, that lady, that little old lady who was checking the tickets, yeah. she says, no, you can't go this way. Oh, and boy. And I said, why? And he goes, because you don't have that little band, that little... Um, one of these one oh, red band thing the there. wristband guy. And I go, are you kidding me? I said, I know we're not sitting together, but they told me we're all going into the same area. No, you can't go in there. you got to go all the way around the other way. And we, when I turn we, around... Wait, wait, we have audio of you talking to the woman. Liar, whore, liar, whore, <laughs> and you know it. <laughs> now, maybe she was pissed because you, uh, you were yelling at him. Shut your goddamn pie hole. <laughs> so you weren't on the floor. No. Okay. So that's what happened, uh, Ben. Yeah, they wouldn't, they we, wouldn't no, let we, me follow you. We guys. waited for 10 or 15 minutes. Like, where is he? So why wouldn't you call us at that time and say that, look, guys, I thought I was on the floor and I'm not on the floor? Because that's the biggest problem here, first of all. All right. Well, when we got the tickets and I looked at it, um, I, I said to Ben, oh, I, got, um, I didn't get the bracelet because I had the side stage. And everybody else, I checked with Steve and everybody else had floor seats. So mm -hmm. pretty much everyone knew I wasn't sitting with you guys. Uh huh. I had no idea, to be honest with you. So, but you didn't call anyone. Because you, you already knew. Uh-oh. <laughs> you had a cell phone. You got cell phone. Everyone's in constant communication. We got cell phones and Blackberries. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, at that point, when I wasn't allowed to continue past that barrier where everybody else was gone, and they were already down, I turned around and went the direction that they told me to. See, at that point, I would have called Ben, Steve, myself, and say, hey, I thought I was with you guys. I'm not. I just want to let you know that. Uh, it's definite. I couldn't follow you guys. Yeah, instead of being led off to Because slaughter. that was the last time. <laughs> well, seriously, that was the last time I saw him. That was the last time I saw him. But we had this plan that we were going to leave early, right? Yeah. Because it's Giant Stadium. It's a nightmare to leave a concert or or a football game, for that matter, and right. get back into the city. Mm -hmm. It's a nightmare. Yeah. And and we have to do the radio show. I, I was thinking, stupid me, I don't want to be out till one thirty in the morning because I'm stuck in you know crazy traffic. So you ditched him. Well, no, I didn't ditch him. Uh, now, now, uh, originally. Hold on. Here's the deal. He didn't call you. Uh, to tell you where he was and, and needing the ride. Did you bother calling him and saying, Eric, where are you? Ben I called. called. You called a few times. Ben called on. twice as we were leaving the stadium. I got one message from Ben, and all I heard was the Rolling Stones and what sounded something like Ben, because I couldn't hear his voice at all on there. <laughs> what do you think it was? It had to be one of us. Jumping I Jack Flat. <laughs> <laughs> where are you? You couldn't hear his voice. Well, we had, was the, yeah, but we had two plans. Calling. We had two plans. The plan was to leave after Sympathy for the Devil or don't 10 show 30. the don't show the list because I got I'm going to ask him a couple of very tough questions here. Uh oh, very but tough the questions. Message immediately. So uh, that logically that makes sense. Leave the concert early. We got to beat the traffic out of, of there course. so we're not stuck for an hour, hour and a half. I no never stay for the encore. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I said that we would start thinking about leaving around 10.30, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did we also say that uh, we would start leaving after Sympathy for the Devil? Because Ben kind of knew the set list. I believe so, yeah. All right. So, so far, two for two, okay? So where were you at 10.30 or after Sympathy for the Devil? Between gate C and B in the parking lot. Because I didn't know exactly where Ooh. you had parked, but it was right near where that gate where we came in. So I stood right there looking and waiting. So you were definitely out of the I stadium at 1030. I was definitely out there, yes. Okay, so far so good. That's one for the defense, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Bill and Anthony, you could uh, decide we'll judge. who's wrong. Okay? I see Eric right now, though. Yeah. I see him in a different light. He's a fancy person who deserves a ride home. Anthony, first of all, uh, we did stay for Sympathy for the Devil. Woo! Woo! And then we stayed for Jumping Jack Flash, which yeah. was right after that. And then... Uh, Ben, myself, and Lindsay started running during Brown Sugar to get the fuck out of there. Uh huh. Running. Ben's freaking. I finally. Well, what was the last song they did? Uh, well, we missed. We only missed two songs. It turned out. You can't always get what you want, which I would really want to see. That's a good one to say. And it's only rock and roll, which is whatever yeah. to me. Yeah. But uh, just a quick side story. I'm sitting in my seats. I'm going to my seats, and some uh, security guard yells out, "Greg!" Oh. And I, I turn like, how the fuck you know him? He goes, no, I know you're Opie, but I don't want to like uh, draw attention to you. I'm ah, a big fan, man. Thank you. He goes, I would do anything for you guys. I'm like, really? Well, how about better seats? Ooh. Because we were way back in the floor. And that was me joking. You know how we are. I'm like, how about better seats? Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Know, Let me see what I could do. And I, 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 I don't think anything of it. And I, sit, and I sit in my seats, right? About a half hour into the concert, he comes by with another big security guard. And he goes, come here. <laughs> and everyone around us thought we were getting kicked out. Like, uh-oh, what do they do wrong? This guy got me uh, up to the 40th row. I was right there. Like I, My huge. seats were amazing for the second half of the concert. But knowing that we all had a meet, 
after Sympathy for the Devil, I start making my way back to the, uh, you know, back of the floor to find Ben. That's the only person I, because at this point I still haven't seen Eric. I assumed he was still in our section. I, I grab Ben. Ben sees me immediately. He's like, dudes, we got to get the fuck out of here. So that's when we started running during, I guess, Brown Sugar. As we're running out, I'm like, what about Eric? Have you seen him? Ben goes, no. Haven't seen him since, the, you know, since the party. I'm like, give him a call at least, okay? See where he's at. He definitely called you. I know he did it. I couldn't hear his message because all I heard was the well, stones. Why calls uh-huh. back? I c- he didn't pick up. You didn't pick up. I uh, even text nah, message nah, him. Nah, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Wait a minute. No, I got messages from you when Later I woke on up this too. morning. No, nah, no, nah, my phone. No, nah, stop. You did not call my phone. I'll show you the phone. You liar, not- whore, liar, whore, and you know it. <laughs> my phone was was on the whole time. Uh oh. What is he doing? What are you calling now? Just I just like the visual out. of them running, just running, running away. <laughs> you have to, though. If you've ever been hand. stuck yeah. in that traffic, oh, you're yeah. two it's hours in. Forever. Giant, giant yeah. Stadium is ruthless. Giant yeah. Stadium is brutal. There's only a few roads mm. out. you know. And so we run into the parking lot. Now, when we arrived at Giant Stadium very early around... F- uh, so didn't that affect your decision? What? Knowing how bad the traffic was to leave mm-hmm. one of the members of your platoon behind? Right. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Like Willem Dafoe. <laughs> but it wasn't like it. fucking knees in the parking yeah, lot. but it wasn't like it was Anthony. Yeah, or the helicopter <laughs> leaving. It wasn't like it was Anthony or Jim Norton, though, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Eric's on his knees, both hands outstretched. Yeah. I don't, I don't have to kiss how his ass. How concerned. I don't have to kiss how, his how ass. I got was, my own money. How long was the conversation? <laughs> right. How long Before did the conversation you last? you put it into drive. You guys seen Eric? No, well, I, I, I got, he's with you. I'm getting there, but there is another side thing. We get there at 5 o'clock. It's Giant Stadium. The parking lot is pretty empty. So instead of going, oh, we're at D3, we're like, oh, we know where we parked, and we just run into the stadium, okay? We kind of get a visual like, okay, that thing over there, oh, and that light pole. Okay, fine. So Ben and I and uh, Lindsay, we run out during Brown Sugar. Now we're like, we got to get to the fucking car. Ben's like, dude, there's 10 minutes left. There's two songs left. I'm telling you, this place is going to clear out at any, at any moment. Uh, also, we run out to this completely filled parking lot. It looks completely different. <laughs> we all start looking around, and I wasn't drinking last night, and I'm like, holy shit, where do we park? Had no fucking clue. Oh, no. So, as I said, where do we park? I had my direction I thought it was in. Ben's like, it's over there. Lindsay's like, it's over there. <laughs> Everyone is pointing in a different direction. And now the panic is setting in because you know this thing is letting out at any second. There were 70,000 people there. <laughs> Mix but, on stage. You want to hear one more? <laughs> got time for one more. And we're just like scratching our head running around the parking lot. Where the fuck is the car? It was like a game. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Good night. No! <laughs> New Jersey rocks. <laughs> right. And it even got to the point, and that's where I, I, you're so wrong, Eric. The fireworks were going off, because I guess they do that during the last song or whatever, and we still didn't find the car. We had no cl- Dude, we were running in all directions. One more time for Charlie Wolf. <laughs> 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 no! So, it, it's kind of dark out there. We're in, all, we're in three different sections. And f- and I'm hitting my thing, like, praying that all of a sudden I'm just going to see, like, headlights. <laughs> yeah, like, you need longer range on those yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Man, 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 with the lights going. So we kind of lucked out. All of a sudden, I beeped, and I was only a couple rows away, and I start screaming, Over here! And then they start running toward my voice. You were not at my car. I know I wasn't at your car. I said I wasn't so at your car. So you didn't know where the car was. Neither did you. I just knew where yeah, the gate was where we came in. But why aren't you calling us he at that He was hoping point? to meet with people. And not just find the car yourself. You you were you were going to meet them somewhere because you didn't know where the car was. I went to the area that I knew it was in. I didn't know exactly you where didn't in hear that us area. Screaming, we were losing our no. minds. We're like, you know, screaming freaking out. And like an we idiot. were freaking out. And we covered so much area. It's not even funny. Like, and we were I all circ- separate. We I were circled all separate around on phones, finding each other. Dude, mm-hmm. I had a run after I was in the parking lot, uh, easily a quarter mile circle, easily just ran like this all the way around and lucked out. So finally, something started to make you know sense to me. And as you're running, at any point, do we have any concern for Eric? We yeah. we called them the during Brown Sugar. We did have we did have concern, Scale and then when we did, ten. Well, listen, when we got in the car, the thing was 
He's going to be fine. There was an XM bus coming back to the city. There was plenty of room on the XM bus. Oh, oh wait a minute. Oh. There's another mode of transportation. For all right. the XM people, all they were right. going back to the Hudson Hotel. Dude, there was 100 people from XM. Hold on, Eric. Did you know about this bus? Yes, I knew about okay, this bus. Okay, Eric wait, did, did know did about the bus. Did you come over in the bus? No, I came with Opie. In the cut. Wow. Came with Opie. You're a dick. <laughs> <Came with Opie. laughs> I'm just saying, you know? I'm looking good so far. Come on. I knew about the bus, but he did come with Opie. Yes. All right. That'll weigh in the decision. So you were in the parking lot somewhere. Yeah. And you called Ben. Uh, when I got his uh, in the message I couldn't hear, I called him. I even texted him. I said, when are you guys leaving? Where are you? Mm-hmm. But that I'm phone, for that's that temporary message. crap phone, yeah. and I had the BlackBerry mm-hmm. number, which is a Washington number, which is the temporary number that I have. Well, the other phone gets fixed. Uh oh. So, so now I wasn't aware. Ben wasn't glitch. prepared. Right. Technologically. <laughs> right. For the phone call. There's a technical glitch. In Opie Ben's, wasn't uh, aware equipment. where they parked. I'm seeing a lot of negligence on the prosecution's part. I'm seeing ne- part. negligence also. Right. Did you, when you got into your car to finally leave, Opie? Right. Right before you, you shut the door. Right. Did you stand up on the bottom of the door and look around Fuck a no, little dude. bit? <laughs> the no. The fireworks were already going. <laughs> I see Opie, no concern. Opie, how many concerts have you been to oh in your life? Oh, my God. Hundreds. How many times have you been to the mall? Hundreds. A bunch of times. Now, isn't one of the things you learn as a youth, yeah. the first time you get lost, yeah. to always remember where you parked? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was negligence on your part? Yeah. Negligence on his part. He didn't know where we parked. And there was the bus. That's why we went to right, the right. I was like, yeah, the bus thing drove? really is a car. Right, right. I see a group negligence, but you got to accept responsibility as the guy that drove is the leader. You are the one that leaves the car and goes, look, we're at Goofy 5. You know, we're at Mickey 8. You know, you got to let people know so so that there isn't any confusion. And there's always other modes of transportation. Yeah. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I guess technically, there was in a your bus. world, you can always leave somebody behind. There's an XM right. bus. There's just <laughs> ways to get back. A Learjet. We yeah. found the car. You the fireworks were going off. And Ben goes... Hurry, hurry, hurry. We backed out and, and, yeah. and peeled out. We flew. I we mean, Opie out. drove out really fast and we were flying. But we, you guys would make was, some great Army Rangers, man. <laughs> <laughs> Never anyway. leave anyone behind. <laughs> ah, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> the Iraqis will pick them oh, like, up. I'm the first person to leave someone at a concert. The POW flag me? is a silhouette of his head. <laughs> Eric's head just looking. T- <laughs> so, we pull, uh, you know, we're gone. We're gone. gone. My phone didn't ring the, in, all the way to the city. Is there any conversations about Eric? Yeah, in on the ride home, was there a wow? Eric's I said, don't be... worry, he'll get on the bus. Or I didn't know Steve had already left. Steve lives yeah. right by the metal. I w- yeah. And you got the XM bus, you got the New Jersey Transit, and then there's always limo drivers. You want 100 grand yeah, yesterday? Yeah, you want 100,000 You can get a limo easily at, after a concert there. Yeah. A little <laughs> resentment by other friends. I'm seeing that the also. Money's won. The guy wins 100 grand and they ditch him. All right. Well, I want to know uh, when about When did you know we were gone? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm standing by the exit gate where all the cars are going out, and I realized they're gone. Oh, okay. i got to go try to find that bus. 11.15, you know what I was doing? I swear to you, at 11.15, I was we were already back. asleep. <laughs> we were back in Manhattan. I was Him standing at the gate, ready. hoping to see Opie's <laughs> car drive by, and Opie in bed snoring. <laughs> no joke. Dude, no joke. I, I ran home. I, I didn't even brush my oh. teeth. Nothing. I, I, oh. I, I was in a nice uh, room filled with AC, all comfy. Eric's still leaving pathetic messages. Yeah. Uh, guys, I uh, well, don't you, see you. Dude, Where are you yeah. guys? Are you still getting out? Are you still getting out of the place? Are you caught in the uh, in the traffic? I'm on the northeast side. Right. I I was I was in La La Land. I was I that was would, yeah, I was in deep sleep because it was a long day. I was tired. I, I'm not kidding. I was I was out cold by 11:15 because yeah. we made we made it to the city in 15 no time. minutes. Nothing. Yeah. We were hops back so fast. Yeah, that would I'd explain have to say the. Uh, that the thought there's other modes of transportation is a euphemism for fuck them. <laughs> right. <laughs> that is so fuck them. Now, I want to know about the bus. Now, the bus was All right, so now the XM po- bus. You didn't realize we left you until 11.15. That's crazy. Because you knew we wanted gate. to get out of there by 10.30. We were even late uh, leaving at that Cause point. Because you wouldn't think that, you know, friends of yours would be <laughs> such <laughs> right. a right. Fuck. <laughs> They couldn't possibly have left without me. Let you must someone, have panicked. Let someone else promote your HBO show. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, he's, like a, he's getting attacked. He's the guy who's left. You're blaming the victim. Right. What were you wearing, you fucking whore? <laughs> <laughs> we could never be happy 
for you anyone. You rode over together. You left the guy. You fucked him. I think subconsciously we can never be happy for anyone on this show, and the fucking guy won 100000 yeah. yesterday, so we had to, like... He wasn't wearing the right wristband. He was asking for it. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you so, must have been in full panic mode, Eric, because I've got three calls on, on my phones from you around 11, 15, 11, 16. I have uh, four calls from you when I woke up this morning, so... I don't know. Maybe someone's going on with my phone. Uh, ben knows my phone did not ring no. from uh, from Brown Sugar all the way home. I'm telling you. And then there's one text message. So I see text message and, and it says from Eric. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's I know it's going to be really capital letters. You yeah. fucking <laughs> fuck. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. <laughs> so I hit read and I'm like, Do, you know, and my eyes are closed and I open them up and it's like, all it says is, thanks a lot. Bro. Oh, <laughs> no. You're a oh. bro. All in big, That's... big fuck you letters, yeah, you know? Yeah, he was in concert speech. <laughs> right. Yeah. Fuck you, bro. Thanks, Thanks a lot, bro. bro. <laughs> and you can tell that the bro was typed out really hard. B-R-O. <laughs> All in capitals. All in yeah. capitals. And I'm like, ooh, this is going to be an ugly <laughs> I morning. think that bro is sarcastic. So at 11.15, <laughs> you're, you're watching the parking lot empty? Yeah, and at that point, I started calling Steve, because I figured, all right, Steve probably didn't leave early, because he's not that far from there. Maybe right. Steve's still stuck in the parking lot. I can find By Steve. By the way, for the rest stuck of the Stuck in country. the parking lot, he, he actually looked up and saw... Oh, oh, there he goes. See, Steve... Steve Types another message. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Steve stayed Bear. all the way through the fireworks, uh, 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 the the uh, the encores, and the goodbyes, and the thank yous, because he, he doesn't have to wait in traffic with that no, hybrid. No. He, he flew over him. everybody. Right over. Mick pointed at his car. It was great. But Look at that little thing. It's the future. But for the rest of the country, just so you know, Giant Stadium is in the middle of nowhere. It's a it's, swamp. It's in the middle of a swamp. It's not... A lot of these stadiums in other cities, you can walk a little bit and you find maybe a, a taxi or something, mm -hmm. but not this case. You don't want to be left in the swamp. No. So 11.15, 11, 11, you, you realize we're gone. You're calling They're Steve. Gone. So what happens? Uh, no response from Steve. So I said, fuck, I better try to find that XM bus. So I go running over. Buses are gone. Buses are gone? Buses are gone. They don't moved. you have Will's number? No, I don't. You don't have any of those Those buses numbers? were gone. They moved... They cleared that whole area for this big wraparound line that went almost around the entire stadium yeah. for the buses for the for the um, New Jersey transit, transit authority. Oh my God! So that's where I wound up standing in line waiting to get a bus to get. Wait back a second! To New York. Wait, wait, wait a second! Wait. You okay. said this morning the bus was full. Right. The XM bus was full. Oh wait, the yeah, guys want in. Come on in. Oh, oh, my God. Come on in, non-winners of hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> what do you got to say, Danny? No, I was just gonna uh, agree with Ben. He did say this morning that. He didn't get on the bus because the bus was full. All Not right. that the bus had right. left, but the bus was this full. This is now getting shaky on your part. The defense is falling apart. No, but we need, we need you know, as a, you need to examine him as, as a character witness. That's I mean, true. He's well, also extremely jealous right now. Yeah. Uh, However, and also... to sell him down the river. I, think, I, I would seriously doubt with the money that XM spent and these high-profile clients that came in from all over the country, they would leave that fast, and everybody would have gotten back to the bus because people uh -huh. are buying T-shirts and yeah, stopped at the retail. Objection, speculation... On the uh, prosecution. Throw, yeah, yeah. throw it out. Don't uh, acknowledge his testimony yes, it now. Doesn't. Throw it out. So uh, you never saw the XM him. bus? No, I didn't see them. You're saying you never saw it, but yeah. you told people you that told it was people full. It was full. When my name, because my name wasn't on the list. What? Uh, wait, what? <laughs> this, is, this is falling apart quickly. Yeah, there's, no. there's something else to this story. I, I, there's something wait a minute. else that was going on. Did you I'm gonna say. see the bus at all no. last night? didn't see that bus at all. And you didn't see anyone from XM? When I Anyone left, no. from that party? There was 100 Dude. people at that party. No, the sales... I was sitting where all the sales, sales staff and, the, and their so clients you, were. You were I had left before they did. I want to get more into this the bus was full statement you made this morning. Mm -hmm. What were you saying that about? Yesterday, when I got the instructions for um, getting my ticket and how to get to the uh -huh. stand, they said... Do you need to go on the bus because the bus is going to be full? I'll put your name. No, I'm going with Oki. Oh, so okay. you were speculating that the XM bus would be full on the way back also. So you didn't even use that as an option. No, because I was supposedly going home with Opie. And then when I realized maybe I could still try to catch the bus, there were no buses. Mm -hmm. How did you get home? Waited online to get a bus to the Port Authority. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific. That's terrific. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> Let me ask you this: What's, the, say, what's the worst thing you said <laughs> as you were standing there muttering to yourself? Yeah, right. Exactly. What's the, the worst, worst thing that you said? 
Oh, I don't know. I was just, I was so... I bet it was really bad and really personal yeah, and yeah. <laughs> about Opie and Ben. I'm wishing and some sort of disease. Right. <laughs> Here's the other thing, though. You just want 100 grand yesterday. Cancer of the ass, that fuck. <laughs> How long did it take uh, to get a bus? <laughs> I waited almost an hour and 20 minutes till I got to the bus. <laughs> 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 oh my god and that's a long hour and 20 oh yeah that is a long that isn't hanging out with a hot chick hour and 20 uh, that isn't watching a good movie hour and 20 that is just looking at your watch every three minutes that's humid metal and that? swamp Air and it. Ugh. Oh, the I, I, day would end like that. Right. You win a hundred grand. <laughs> you got wristbands for the stones. And the end of the day, a you're nice standing in a party. swamp with the common people, <laughs> oh, waiting for the muttering. New Jersey transit, <laughs> typing text muttering. messages <laughs> to people who you thought were your friends. I gotta be Bro. honest. With you. I gotta be honest. I can look anyone in the eye, no problem, even when it gets a little tough. And Eric's been with us a year now. I'm having a tough time looking at him this yeah, morning. Yeah, you guys fucked him. For the first time. <laughs> well, it, you it, fucked him. It, it gets worse. So you, all right, so you oh. waited an hour and a half or yeah. an hour and 20 minutes for a Port Authority bus. <laughs> now, you live in Brooklyn. Yeah. What time was it when you got on the bus? Knowing that... Um, it had to be well after 1 a.m. Oh, my God. Wow. I was already asleep for a, a solid two hours. Solid Did you at least hours. get to sit down on the bus, or are you standing in the I aisle? Got, I sat down. Like Mama! Oh, <laughs> 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 God, this wait, is awful. Before we move on, Crazy Adam says there's a hole in Eric's defense. Crazy uh, Adam. Hey, uh, if Ben has a different phone, doesn't the caller ID show the number? Why couldn't you call the caller ID back? Um, no, it's a... Wait... <laughs> You said your Blackberry is a different number, right? Yeah, the Blackberry is a Washington number. Washington number. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but no, a number is a number, man. I mean, still possible. So Eric could have just called that number back, I don't whatever have it was. that number. I have his New York number. But did the number show up on your phone when Ben did call when you? When Ben called you. And did you really call my phone? Yes, I called your phone. Starting at Plus, it's a, it's a D.C. area code. You probably think it it's for you, bang, down there in a promotion. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I think the forensic, uh, forensic guys there should take a look at his phone. Check we the need call the phone list. records. Yeah. We should have that guy from A&E do the narration. You know what? <laughs> you have this horrible tragedy. You know what? Here's the deal. 1 a.m. I did not bring... Stranded <laughs> at the Meadowlands. I did not bring my phone in. Did you leave messages? There were some hang-ups. Yeah, I had hang-up. four voicemails. Three were hang-ups. No, one was from Ben because he l- left something in my car. Two were hang-ups. And one was finally you just saying, thanks a lot. <laughs> or something like that. So, I don't have my phone on me. I could call my house and we could get to the bottom of when those calls came in. Okay. All right, and I'll be completely honest. Okay. But I'm telling you, I the phone did not ring from 10:30 when we started leaving, uh, all the way until I uh, dropped Ben off and uh, and went home. There are people waiting for buses that aren't there. Why are <laughs> they waiting for these buses? But I will. Uh... <laughs> you go to the concert with three friends. You leave with two. <laughs> Nothing. I don't want to talk about it, Larry. <laughs> it's awful. This poor man was standing there, and no one would pick him up. <laughs> the bus was full. He had to write thanks a lot, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got Erox Mind checking in. Erox Mind, what's up? Worst thing I was thinking that night. It wasn't my pals. It was that fucking meal ticket comment. She was just pulling those strings. Ah, the paycheck. The paycheck left you there, my Uh, friend. You know what? That might have uh, played into a little bit. Oh, boy. (laughs) A seedy story of resentment. (laughs) Resentment? Laying itself out in a swamp in New Jersey. So, 11.15, you realize. So, what time did you get on the bus? 1.15, right? I couldn't tell you. I know it was well after 1 a.m. 1.15, while Opie slept at home, Eric was just getting on a bus. What time would he get home? How would he get home? Stay tuned. We'll be back after these words. So that is the music. Wow. Very good, Derek. Very <laughs> All right, so you're on a Port Authority bus back to Manhattan? <laughs> yeah. Which sucks because you live in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. So you got to go all the way back to Manhattan and then take a what? Yeah, now, what happens? The, the Jersey buses don't take you home to your house in Brooklyn. No, so I get off at the Port Authority. <laughs> then i got to go downstairs and around this other area because they're cleaning, so they block that off to go to where the taxi line is. Uh-huh. All the cabs that, that are waiting there, going to Jersey, going to Jersey, going to Jersey. No. 
So I'm in this now another line <laughs> waiting to get a taxi to try to get back to Brooklyn. But it, I, I get tapped. I turn around. It's Stalker Patty. Hi. <laughs> what is Stalker Patty doing out in the middle of the night? Her and those and a few other people were coming back from some gambling junket in Atlantic City. Oh, she's hooked. <laughs> so she's like, what are you doing here? Waiting for a cab. Oh, oh it was nice to see you. And then she, she left. So um, She will pop up everywhere. It's really yeah. creepy. It's not like it's a small town. This is friggin', this is New York City. And she pops up everywhere. I finally had to tell her to stop following me on the subway because she was doing that for a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When I was uh, still commuting back to Long Island. She would just happen to be on my subway, and after the third time of her saying, Wow, what a coincidence. I'm like, Patty, I know what you're doing. Stop. Please stop. Eric, you could hop on the jitney. I'm sure the jitney will take you there. How is she going to Atlantic City every goddamn weekend on weekdays? She was getting back from an Atlantic City junket on a Thursday. Some slot machine tournament. <laughs> Get oh her on the God. phone. We gotta hear about the slot machine. The tournament. World Series of Losers tournament. Like she got a headband on. Like there's something, yeah. something fucking athletic about it. Yeah. What kind of tournament is the? The machines are doing the work. I don't like this bucket. I don't like. I don't like it. Warm ups are just cracking your knuckles a lot. You know, getting ready. All right. So uh, what happens? You're on this line for a cab back to Brooklyn. What time is it? It's now. 2 a.m. Oh, we gotta, oh, it's 2 in the morning. <laughs> we got to be here at, what, 5.30? Just give, give us one sound bite of something that you said about yeah. either one of these two creeps who just left <laughs> you there. Honestly, I said, they're sitting in that car laughing that I'm still out here. I'm, I, I figured they, they did it intentionally because they've no done rage. it a few other places. But I never thought they, they would do it in here. We did it where? He tried doing it to me in Washington Station. Well, no, he, well, listen, what, what he wanted about? to do to you in Washington would have been really bad because Ope wanted to report your bags. You went in the bathroom. Remember this? This is when we first went oh, to Washington. Oh, yeah. You were going to yeah. say that you ah. saw those bags unattended? <laughs> Oh, so yeah, that, history yeah. Of yeah, but oh, then, yeah, wow. yeah, but we all decided yeah. that was a yeah, bad I, call. I, I Very bad. No, 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 that's not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> but we did, yeah, I think, didn't we ditch you at the... Uh, he I'm was sure ditched once somewhere. before. Where were we? We ditched you Yes, ever? we ditched him somewhere. Where? I'm remembering. It's like, where's where? Eric? We ditched him. Where? I think it was at the train station in Washington. Was it a car or a limo or something? Was it the X Games? Th I can't remember where it was, but there was some point where we were like, where's Eric? Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that was said. <laughs> Pat, Patty's on the phone, by the way. I know. We'll get to Patty in a second. So, uh... cha -ching. So now it's after 2 a.m., mm -hmm. and, and you have to be... Why don't you just come back to the station at that point? You have to be here at 5.30 in the morning. Oh, I was fed up. So I, I, I took here. a cab back, slept, took a shower, slept, and then came back here to work. How much did that uh, whole trip cost you to come back? $45. $45. Yeah. <laughs> Bag of shells, right? You right, my have, friend. You still have ninety nine thousand nine hundred and fifty five bucks. That's right. <laughs> don't worry about it. You don't have a hundred grand anymore. <laughs> Forty five bucks. <laughs> <I think. laughs> In five hours so, of your life that you'll never so get. So what do you do? Sleep an hour? I think so. Like hour, hour and a half. Got up and then. Because like I tell you, man, after sleeping six hours, I feel a little tired today. Yeah, oh. just a little tired. <laughs> I usually get eight, but I got six, so I'm a little little groggy today. <laughs> My heart pulls for you. <laughs> I know, for a guy who won 100 grand, went to the Stones last night. He I that know. Happy, does he? He's miserable. That's 100 grand. I'd have been walking home whistling zippity doo dah. <laughs> right. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, you got you want 100 grand, you got to see the Rolling Stones, yeah. you know. It, not a bad thing. How much did the ticket cost you to see the stones? Nothing. Exactly. As much as we freebie. As much as we fucked them, I think there's there's more to the story that you're not telling. That's yeah, there's I'm, something going there's on. There's something else that was going on that might have distracted you. Any girls involved in this story that we don't know about? No. No. Nope. Come on, you're feeling good. You made some money. You want to be a big shot. No. You pull out your wad. Big shot. No. 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 I had a great seat. The car had no was money great. there, so he has to pull out his scratch and match ticket. I won. I'm trying to. Get the girls to uh, yeah, go. Didn't the Daily News right. give give you a T-shirt to wear? I won. We got Scratch another winner. Mad. No. I am the winner. Who's the winner? Right away. Ladies. <laughs> <laughs> One at a time. All right, let's say hi to Matt in New Jersey. Matt, what's going on today? Hey guys. Hey. I was just going. I was just calling and tell you, uh, Eric, let this die. If you would have made Opie late this morning or had him sleeping late, you know how pissed off you would be for the rest of the day. Just let it die and count your thousands of dollars. 
Yeah, it's one of those sucks to be you type of things. All right, why don't you let the uh, listeners be the uh, the jury? Yeah, Jeremy, what's up? How you doing, guys? Hey, I, why should we care? Why couldn't like Scrooge McDuck here spend seventy five dollars, rent himself a car service, and be home in forty five minutes? Oh, exactly. It's a right. heartless jury. That's two for the prosecution. Yeah. yeah. Do you know you could have just called the numbers you hear all the time seven 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 seven. One of those, and you could have gotten a, t- a town car to pick you up, drive you f- from there to your door for a, probably a little bit more than you wound up uh, spending anyway. Not only that, I mean, there's plenty of cars going back. I've gone and just asked people, hey, you going back to Manhattan, can I give you 20 bucks or whatever? People yeah, do you that just all go up the to the, uh, the windows of the cars and go, hey, take me back there, I'll throw you some money. Here's my friend. They take you right back. But well, that's a whole other side. That. You're just saying what he should do after they fucked him. After they fucked him. Well, <laughs> it's like, yeah. You've already been fucked. Don't don't take a shower. Wait till the police examine yeah. your privates. Exactly. That's what you're saying. They <laughs> gotta get the, the guy, rape the kit. They got raped. You gotta, gotta fucking pull out the rape swamp. kit and take some swabs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're spinning this off into another. I We're know. talking about the initial. Right. I, I, I'm at the point where you're like, you should go to therapy. You should yeah. you try to work out. But what a roller coaster of a day for the guy, though, man. Holy crap, Chuck. Let's. Uh, yeah. You want to go to some of these yeah. phone calls? Let's go to North Carolina. Chuck, what's going on? I was just wondering if uh, Rosie was on the bus with him. <laughs> hey, this is this is Eric. He just won money, and uh, his friends fucked him and left him at the the concert. <laughs> oh, that horrible movie Rosie did where she played the retard. You yeah. see that one? It's classic. Oh, it's great. Uh, his friends left him, and now he's fucked. That's exactly how she sounded. Look at his text. He's texting something. Wait a minute. Fuck off, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Jersey. Hey, I just noticed that uh, this continues to streak of good luck for the show after Jimmy left. You know, you guys get lesbians, and now Eric wins 100000 What's next? That is true. That is true. We've yeah. been on a nice roll, except for the Rolling streak Stones. Streak of luck. Thing. Well, that was oh, just for Eric. That. The uh, guy, what, weigh it, let's weigh out the fucking luck here, people. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's put it on the scales over here. You win a hundred grand. You had to uh, uh, spend 45 bucks and a couple of hours uh, uh, getting home from the Stones show. I think it evens out somewhere. Not even evens out. By tomorrow exactly. morning when you wake up, when you get a good night's sleep, eh, that'll just be a little nuisance thing. You still got the hundred grand. Most yeah. people would be happy just to have a free Rolling Stones ticket. The right. tour's right. completely sold out. You know, so he got screwed going back. No he many, won a hundred grand on top of it. How many p- people yes, hitched wanna, home from Woodstock, man? I want to point to the jury that, that the prosecution just admitted yeah. to fucking him over. <laughs> I heard <laughs> that. I heard he that. just admitted I really he got think, screwed. Uh, Eric's not thankful enough. For the fine day he had yesterday. Motivation. Wow. <laughs> Look at his face. He's, he's, he's like, I should be thanking you. You want a hundred grand? Let's let, yeah, let's put this on the table. You want a hundred grand? he's establishing motive right now. Right. It was, was a, this guy's grateful. It was enough. a wonderful VIP uh, party with mm-hmm. free booze and food. Oh, but are you saying you want Eric to say thank you to you? Yeah. <laughs> that, okay, he is kind of right. Point, at any point did he go into like some sort of convenience store and you guys hatched this plan? Look at him in there. Actually, Getting he's. A he doesn't yeah. look thankful, does he? <laughs> Son of a bitch wins a hundred grand. Uh, he should we be need thanking to teach him. What did I do? Lesson. He got your yeah. tickets. He got your ticket. No, Without didn't. yes, you did. Wow. Eric, yes, you did. Yes, you Anthony did. was offered the tickets. Yeah, Eric, I was. And he didn't go. Eric, all I'm asking today is. That, that could have been me getting fucked. <laughs> <laughs> all I'm asking today is that you thank me. That's all. Wow. Wow. <laughs> it was a VIP party, free oh, booze, free food, fuck? really nice Rolling Stones Don't table. do it. Don't do it, Eric. If you, you do that, I'll beat you with that you, fucking yeah. microphone. You had a nice ride to the to, to the venue. You got you got a free T-shirt, a free program. Right. I yeah. let him in your head, Eric. And I just want to add this to the to the pile. I picked you out of obscurity. When you were just working for a tiny little station in the middle of nowhere in Florida. I just, you've never officially thanked me on the air. Wow. That's a ballsy move, man. What do you think? Can I pick and choose what I can thank you for? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know what? He has one it. general thank you. That's all. Oh, what Remember when cock. I was coming back from Florida and I mentioned in the middle of nowhere on a... Okay. Thank you for the career. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. You know what, dude? No. Oh, you, you, uh, you fucking <laughs> deserve to be left in a swamp. This could be my greatest accomplishment ever. <laughs> Oh, man. I can't Eric. believe I just spent fucking a half hour defending you, yeah. and you turn around and do that Thank shit. Him. Who the fuck raised you? <laughs> this is the most pathetic thing I've ever heard in my life. They left you in a fucking swamp. He doesn't have a fucking leg to stand on. Oh, my and God. And over the air, you just fucking genuflect. You just kissed his fucking ring. 
But I had a lot of ammo, man. He never thanked me. I, I actually that's pulled over. I that's pulled it. over that's out of what? What was it? A cracker barrel? Unbelievable. Yeah. We went to eat at a cracker barrel in the middle of nowhere, oh in the, mid in the middle of Florida. That That's how I met the kid. He's me with the cat box, the garbage, and the vacuum. <laughs> Unbelievable. Just smiling. Shoulders slumped. You are you step and fetch it. <laughs> how much money do you need to win before you get to the fucking... You're spine in you. You have an F.U. nest egg right there. It's F.U. money. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you're a battered woman sometimes, really. Yeah. He didn't mean it. He didn't mean it. I know he really cares deep down. He didn't even and he do said that. he's going to change. No. Yeah, he said, you need to thank me. <laughs> he smacked you in him a again. Swamp and he did it. Eric, Not for the swamp. Eric, Eric. Started, Semantics, Eric what you thanked this, him for. Eric started this morning going to himself, oh, I'm going to give him a piece of my oh, mind. Yeah. And by the end of the morning, he's thanking he me. He had a moment of courage. <laughs> Thanks a lot, bro. Bro. Finally welled up in him and you beat him back down. Now we realize he was really thanking him. Thanks a lot, bro. <laughs> oh, wow. Holy crap. I don't know what to tell you, man. I tried to Hold defend on, you. Hold on, Danny, what's up? Well, not that I was just thinking about this whole scratch and match situation. Yeah. yeah. And I could swear that Eric was taking the scratch and match things out of the show papers that we get every morning. Oh, oh no. boy. So, I mean, and technically, <laughs> technically the papers are delivered to Ben. And technically you so, ain't getting shit. Oh. Well, I'm not, oh. Hey, you got a set of balls. I don't yeah, get too mad at that. Hey, hey, go. Danny. What's this world oh, coming to? Hey. Danny's going to shoot him. But yeah, but I'm not, I'm not asking Fuck for any. Fuck you, Spider. Yeah, I'm not you asking are. for anyone. I, 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 I thought you said are. Spider, the papers were everyone, Spider. <laughs> Eric, Eric fought back and everyone stood up. Come on. Hey. Bring it on. Danny just got a raise. <laughs> <laughs> Was it uh, the... No. Uh, Papers from here? No. So that would make a big difference. I no, think they better one, write another name on that. No, one, we don't get the Sunday Daily News here, too. I bring them from home. Uh, Ben's saying, yes, we do we get, do the, get Sunday the Sunday Daily, Daily News. News. And that Sunday, we pulled it out. And didn't we pull out and realize that those two were winners? In the Sunday paper that we got no. here. And that made us think, wow, this really is widespread because not only did Eric Nagel say he won, but this papers from the station actually no. won 100 grand. Oh, wait, I I'll do remember right. that. I'll yeah, that's right. I'll I do remember right. that. You know what? He's, I think he's, he's right. We did do that. Because there were so many winners. I was like, wow, they really did fuck up because what are the odds yeah. that you're going to win and the station papers are going to win? Now, yeah. are you sure that that was yours? I'm positive it was mine. Mm -hmm. I like know exactly everyone in what there. happened. Oh, Travis knows exactly what happened. I came in that day and, I, brought and I went yeah. home after no. that. Thank you. <laughs> I want to take no chances in this. <laughs> and, I, and I brought the story up and Eric goes, oh, I have a copy of, of the scratch match in the studio. I'll run in and see if I win. Oh! And he scratched it off, and lo and behold, he won. And then after the show, he said, of course I'm going to mail it in. What? Why wouldn't I? You're saying absolutely. that absolutely the one that he sent in was from the station's absolutely. paper. Absolutely. Absolutely. No. Yes. No. It when I came in that oh, bin boy. that you had over there... For months, oh, man. it was no. pink. What do we got? About ten Absolutely. people working? Actually, no. It's I, I purple. I want my ten grand. Ten grand. Ten grand. Ten grand. Ten grand. Ten grand, ten grand hey. for everybody. Wow. Eric, I want you no. to apologize. <laughs> no. For using one of the station's papers. Why wouldn't you apologize for taking food out of their mouths? Is what you're doing. Because one, it wasn't a station paper. Well, I Travis think disagrees with that. Station paper. He wow, can disagree all he wants. He's not getting it. Let's get a money. lawyer. This would make for great radio, <laughs> wow. man. Let's sue one of our own. I think they deserve <laughs> to share spend, in this. Make us spend 80 grand of the winnings on defense. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You would, too? Eric, if uh, if you just get... See, I'm thinking I, I I don't know. I should get... There's 10 of us, right? I should get 10,000. You give me 1,000, I won't sue you. No. You want to settle it? Just settle yeah, out? I'll just settle out. What do you think about settling out with everybody? A grand for about, everyone. Uh, That's no. nothing, really. Ten grand yeah. out of a hundred grand? I'll tell you, I, I would have done it anyways. You, you know? got to do something. Right. Yeah. Just, just to be a decent a, guy. How about a nice like lunch for everybody? Something. Yeah, I offered that to all of them yesterday. I said I was going to take them out to lunch spender. and dinner. But now you don't want to take them out because they just threw you under a bus. <laughs> I didn't throw you under a bus. Those guys That was one did. of the you first things I said. <laughs> <laughs> By leaving his ass in the swamp... <laughs> Well, yeah. Somehow it ends up with you apologizing to him. I've never this fucking is, seen that. I, I unbelievable. I really can't believe that the, they would throw you under a bus oh, like I could. that. Yeah. You know? 
Look I would him. never do that to you. <laughs> Where are you taking him to lunch? <laughs> what happened to five minutes ago? <laughs> Oh. Would you guys accept lunch from him? No, they're all shaking their heads. <laughs> they don't want it. Wow. They don't want it. Ah, let's see. Which way? Let's say hi to... Does Eric have a car? I guess we're done. What are you going to do uh, with the uh, 100 grand? What do you got? Any plans? Just going to invest it. Invest it? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What, what are you investing in? Not sure yet. I'm working on that. Citadel stock. Yeah, you want to buy some Citadel? Yeah, I'll give you my Citadel stock. Uh, sa- something safe? Something long-term or a little risky to make uh, money quickly on? Something long-term, I think. Yeah. You want Mutual see? funds? Blue chips. Let's have you talk to that tough guy, uh, Barry Shapiro. <laughs> guy that packs a mean punch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. Wow. All right, we'll talk to Stalker Patty after the break, I guess. About her Atlantic City uh, junket. She's a, I think she's really getting addicted to the gambling thing. She seems to be going all the time. I'm glad we uh, cleared this up, Eric. And your apology is accepted. Yeah, I'll accept your apology. All's, <laughs> all's well now. I like how he's sitting there thinking it over. <laughs> how the fuck did that happen? I was so right. So right, yet he... Apologized. He apologized and, and thanked someone for his career. <laughs> <laughs> he still has wow. fucking dirt on his knees from that swamp. <laughs> the swamp. He left him at a swamp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never you know seen what? anything like that. Oh, that's the end of any thanks, mate. All right, we better take a break. Yeah. Yeah. There was a time we uh, we gave away a hundred grand. This yes. We haven't played this thing in a while, Anthony. Mm-hmm. A lot of new listeners. We were at a uh, radio station in uh, the Boston area, and one day we decided to give away a hundred grand. Mm-hmm. Bravo. Great job, uh, Eric. Now go get your fucking shine box. <laughs> Metallica. Uh, Dane Cook coming in at 9.30, I believe. I don't think he's ever done our show in studio. Not live, no. Just... Funners. We've had a couple phone calls uh, from him over the years. He's blowing up big time. I Bill Burr uh, also blowing up. I think uh, he's made probably a hundred grand off of his uh, you think? record sales. Yeah, yeah maybe a hundred grand. Mm-hmm. Bill Burr is going to be on HBO tonight at midnight. Half hour comedy special. I'll watch that one for sure. On HBO. He's a very right. funny guy, but I'm not going to really push it anymore because he wasn't on my side during that last break. It was just such a, a, no a, a was. gang mentality. No one Someone was. had to defend it. Th- that's what happens on the show, And I did though. up until the apology. No one comes to your side on the show. You fuck up. Everyone attacks. Everybody. Everyone. All right. Felt bad for him. Um, oh, is, one, is this true? What? That uh, some of the um, FEMA uh, debit cards that they handed out are now uh, found they were being used at a strip club. <laughs> nice. <laughs> at a gentleman's club. Bravo. <laughs> ah, that's fantastic. Because you're giving uh, these things Houston. out to people that don't have much responsibility to, be- get to begin with. You think right. All of a sudden they're going to change their lives and go, hey, let's put this money to good use. Ah, that's great. They're really saying that, though? They're coming- yeah. You could stand on the side of the road, I swear to God, with some sort of bin and some sort of, like, uh, official-looking thing and just say New Orleans Relief, and idiots will come up and put cash in it. Yeah, you'll make some money. Mm. Sure. I'm sure it's happening. There's always yeah. scammers. That, there's uh, more scams than actual uh, charities. Yeah, yeah they, they, they said saying. that there's, like, 20 websites out there. Yeah, all phony. People trying to get... Uh, yeah, immediately, who gets KatrinaAid.com or something? You think it's legitimate or you think it's just some guy? You know what? I, this still is dirtbag as that is. There's something just fucking hilarious. <laughs> you know they're, they're giggling like fucking third graders when they're setting a the thing up. Yeah. Like, Dude, you believe we're going to fucking The money's going to pour in. <laughs> just sitting there on the phone. Yeah, I know. I feel bad for the victims, too. It's looking at your face. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. Oh, we want to talk to Stalker Patty. Yeah, I want to know how she's, uh, what she's doing. <laughs> During actually. Eric's adventure last night, he ended up on a, I don't know, a taxi line at t- two in the morning, and Stalker Patty was behind you, right? Yeah. Something like that. And we got Stalker Patty on the phone. Stalker Patty. Hey, how you doing? Hi, Patty. All right. Uh, now you saw Eric. Yes, I did. He was on a taxi stand at about ten to one in the morning. I was just getting off the bus. 
You were just getting off the bus. Yeah, I went to Atlantic City because I got invited to a slot tournament. I go about once a month because it's something to do. Slot tournament? What's a slot tournament? Uh, You uh, bring a card, you hand it in, you get taken to a machine, you have seven minutes to play, and whoever has the 50 highest scores cashes. I never win. I only had 4,400. The lowest score was like 7,000. Yes, it's just luck of the draw. It's you a say? slot machine. Yeah, there's no skill involved. Yeah, so I went down there for it, and then I just hung around. I won about seventy-five dollars, so that was nice. Oh, you're up. That's that's my big win. <laughs> how does she win? How does anyone win at the slots? I don't know. What do you play? The nickel? I did the quarter ones. Ooh, well, you're living hot. Huh? You're living. Sometimes the penny ones I like. You know, I I can't afford to do the others. But Patty, I you watch. can't afford to go there. You should be saving those quarters for food. Yeah, but if I did not, if I didn't do that, I'd be sitting home doing nothing. I don't go anywhere. I don't really have a social life, so it's just something. Really, this is the other side of gambling. They don't want you to know no, about. You know, this wo- this woman needs every penny she can. These are the kinds of people who show up to the comedy show after they're out of pennies or nickels <laughs> and just sitting there with slumped like shoulders. Yeah, because they have two hours to kill yeah. before the bus takes them back to the city. Yeah. You know, I go on the boardwalk, too. It's the only time I see the ocean. <laughs> Jump in it. No, I just like going there just for something to do, and I like the ocean. I like the ride down and back. I don't do very much with the machines. I like watching the people do the tapes because they look kind of oh. funny to me when they act, oh, oh. like when they win oh. and stuff. Oh, be so right. This is the side they don't want you to see. They want you to see the glamour, the World Series of Poker with the guys. Let's bring out the million dollars and put it on the table, yeah. and these last two people are going to be playing for a million dollars cash. Right. And there's Patty throwing her quarters best spent on food right. in this slot machine after taking a stinky bus ride with I a bunch of Asians. I don't have anything better to do. <laughs> no, it's a bunch of old people. It's old people. Thing. Yeah, I don't mind it. <laughs> I ended up in Vegas with Stephen Lynch's crew when I was just wandering around the country. I took a ride from um, L.A. to Vegas through the desert and stuff with a bunch of L.A. dudes that yeah. looked like they were in Stone Temple Pilots. They all looked like rock stars, <laughs> even though they just worked at like a Starbucks. And uh, and we're there for Stephen Lynch. He was playing, I guess, uh, I guess it was the Hard Rock at the time. And uh, all of a sudden, these guys, I was hanging out with them all weekend. They're like, you got, you, you want to see the real Vegas? I'm like, yeah. yeah. Two, maybe three blocks from all the glam and glitter. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. And it's right there. It's not that far from the strip. Yeah. Places where they say they'll they'll accept your your car title and your house title for loans. (laughs) Oh, shit. Oh. Right off the strip, yeah. saying, you know, we will accept whatever it is, your house, what is it called, a house? Uh, and you know, yeah, your deed. And your deed, yeah. and then there's there's motels that uh, are for like, I don't know, like $10, no joke, like $10 a night. And you got people just wandering around, just like, they lost it all. I like the slot machines and the gas stations. Like, who can't get away? You know, you're either, you're leaving, you want to fill up your tank and leave. <laughs> who needs that one last pull or something, you know? Right. No, it's even worse if you win, because then you're turning your fucking car yeah. back. <laughs> How are you going Here back? Here we go, I'm on a streak. <laughs> well, you stay at the gas station. This machine's hot. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sir, at least move your car away from the pump. <laughs> no, I walk away, I jinx myself. Yeah, I can't Keep leave. Keep the car, I'm up 75. I don't know how anyone, you know, lives in Vegas. Because when you, you go there, you get just pulled into it, obviously. You really do. But when you're living there and these slot machines are in grocery stores, the Starbucks, the gas stations, I, I don't know. I'm not how many times you got slot, a cab though. driver out there and he's got a story? Oh, oh yeah. they all do, yep. Oh, yeah, they yeah. all fucking, uh, oh, yeah, I stay out of those places. Everyone that works there is like, no, I don't gamble at all. I stay away from it. No drinking. They're all born again Christians. Yeah, they I think they sold there. themselves into some sort of slavery out there. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the last roll of the dice <laughs> to the cab company. Yeah, there's some kind of slave labor. <laughs> you know, I I, I wasn't going to go there. I did notice something uh, during Starker Patty's phone call. She's still on the line, by the way. Yeah, I wasn't going to go there, but the phones are going nuts. They really are. There's like five people that have the same comment. Larry, go ahead. Hey, did you anybody catch what happened there just then? Uh, he says, Eric said he didn't get on the, uh, he didn't leave the bus till way after one, yet Stalker Patty said she saw him at the, uh, taxi stand at 10 to 1. Patty. Patty? Stalker Patty? Yes. 
Now, it was about 10 to 1 because that's when I got off the bus and came up outside and I saw him there. See, she's crazy. Right she like knows time. Yeah, long. crazy people are like, they know the time all the time. She knows every time she does everything. She's <laughs> yeah. like anal like that. She yeah. knows. So if she says that she saw your 10 to 1, it was 10 to 1. Big hole in the story there. He's like the third person in line. Did he look happy? He looked kind of like uh, tired. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the look. <laughs> Imbibing. I think he imbibed a little too much. <laughs> Imbibe. All right. Well, there you have it. Imbibe some arsenic. <laughs> All right, Thanks, guys. Punch it out. Thanks, Larry. Uh, so, Stark and Patty went down to where Atlantic City, and you played the slots in some dumb tournament. Anything else yeah. happened down there? No, I just had my dinner and just went to the boardwalk, went to my favorite deli because it's the one with all the dollar bills all over the counter and cash registers, so it's kind of cool. So, I like to have coffee in there because the place looks cool. I saw the water and uh, went into some of the 99 cent shops and stuff like this that. This was on I TV, there'd be a there. sponsorship number underneath her. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear her? This is just so sad. Isn't I can't it? even make fun of her. This is just sad. I'm just wandering around the boardwalk all alone. Money on the counter. You hear the last dreaming. part? I like it. She says she walks into the 99 cent stores. Yeah, oh. they're all over the boardwalk. They're right there. Did you buy anything? Yeah, I just got a little top to keep warm inside the casino because I forgot to bring something with me. It was like 4.99, you know. 4.99 at the 99 cent store. And did it say anything on it? Yeah, just said Atlantic City Athletic Department. Athletic <laughs> Department. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, she's got the body of an ant. I was gonna say I should have said Atlantic City Ant Farm. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> Athletic Department. Great. And were you alone? Yes, I was. Sitting in that diner with the dollar bills on the counter, drinking her cup of coffee, just staring off of their thoughts. Yeah, what do you dream about when you're in that situation? Yeah, what are your, what is your mind, where does it go? What if I was one of the lucky ones that hits for the jackpot oh. or a thousand or something, you or know? a thousand. She's just looking for a grand. <laughs> what if the money on the counter was real? And how did I do with the slot tournament? I got a check about 8.30 tonight when they're posting it, so I had to run back to Caesars and go look at the list. Of course, I wasn't on it. Do you start? The lowest person was seven thousand, and I only had forty-four. Patty, do you start uh, thinking about what you would spend the money on? If I won, yeah. Um, I don't know. I just put it in the bank until I decided what to do. What do you? What is the? Just take care of something. Maybe get a bigger you, place to live or something. What's you know? like the one materialistic thing you want? What is like the the oh. dream item that you really want to buy that you'll never think you can afford? The one item. Uh, well, I'm already getting it, so I'm happy. What? My friend's going to give me his old computer, and I'm <laughs> going to get to watch his life. dogs for about three months free, you know, when he goes away. <laughs> That's not a... <laughs> That's a dream item I, to me. Oh, can I take a break? I, I don't, this is, like, depressing me. Isn't it depressing? But it's not depressing to her. She doesn't, she doesn't understand how sad <laughs> this is. To her, this is great. This segment brought to you by Paxil. <laughs> you know, but you know what I would like? A portable DVD player to watch a movie yeah, yeah. on a bus or something or sit in Central watch Park. Reruns, and watch that's it. Reruns of the old Lawrence Welk show. <laughs> Make it even more depressing. I'm getting the box set. <laughs> uh, Patty, so a, a portable DVD player? Yeah, that would be one of my dream that's items. That's one of your dream items? I have, but it's like $400 for one, and you know you can't spend $400 well, for one of those. Well, Patty, you know? we can make your dreams come true. That's right. We're the dream makers there's, over here. There's at the a new Anthony show, show. Uh, hitting TV where they make uh, dreams come true. Yeah. Yeah. Which, uh, quite frankly, it's bad timing considering what happened with Hurricane <laughs> Katrina. And now, <laughs> Katrina, and now they're doing these stupid dreams on TV that people are... Are hoping for. Yeah, the dreams are all small. I want socks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You know, the dreams to have a, dry socks. Uh, not like a one room place, but like a two or three room apartment. I can have my study in one room, my bedroom in the other room. A little, study. You know what I mean? A bigger apartment would be a dream. I'm a millionaire and I don't have a study. A study. All right, Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> yeah. Who has a nice. study? Studies. I believe she's in the study. Please follow me, sir. That's what I was thinking. You got to open two doors. You right. can never just right. do the one. You got to. <laughs> right. It's all dark wood in there with books all over. What would you have? Fucking raven. <laughs> raven. Yeah. Right. yeah. I like reading. I like suit of armor in the corner. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna keep myself. 
sandwich. And a buffalo you know, head. Any Come left. into the study. What would you have in your study? Oh, well, I move my stereo in there. You my little, you know, you know, stuff. You know, my uh, music, whatever. I'd have my uh, albums all on one wall. You know, all my. Who are some of your uh, your favorite albums? Yeah, like if you could my listen to an album, ones, right? My Bob Dylan ones and right. my treasures. My treasures oh, would be on another shelf, and I love reading. Yeah, yeah. You know things this... like that. What's and your favorite yeah. book, Patty? Oh God, I like the classics. So I'm embarrassed to say what it is, but I enjoy Five Little Peppers and how they grow. I enjoy books on life sciences and biology and stuff like that. I like reading a little bit of that Isaac Asimov. You know, Asimov. Yeah, Asimov, Isaac Asimov. Asimov? Uh, he wrote about, like, 200 books on yeah. science, behavioral... Patty's hanging out at the 800 section in the library. Science fiction. That's what her study looks like. Novels. Well, <laughs> well Patty, what would you do for a DVD player? Because, okay. Patty, I have a used DVD player. Used. <laughs> 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 to go with your used computer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Patty. What would you do for a DVD player? Mm -hmm. Hmm, I don't know. I'll go down on the beach there and do a go well sticker oh. stop. <laughs> Ugh. No, no, that's not what we have in mind. No. Why, what would you have in mind? <laughs> it has to be something humiliating. You know that. She's already trotted around <laughs> on her hands and knees <laughs> naked with a Krusty the Clown mask on. <laughs> what more could she possibly do? I know. <laughs> she's got to dump that virginity is what she's got to do. Yeah, if you dump that virginity, you could have my used DVD player. Did you go out on a date with Big A yet? No, not yet. No. Are you going to? Oh, I don't know. I mean, we. I do see him sometimes around, you know. Mm. You know, socially, you know, like uh, I see him around. Do you like the Big, uh, the big A? He's very nice. He's a very nice fellow. Oh, there might be a little love connection. Ah, a little action what do you think? study. What do you think, Patty? I mean, is there a little spark there I'm on not, your part? You know, uh, I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, breaking news for all whackbaggers. Yeah, Stalker no. Patty likes Big A. <laughs> ah, start the photoshops. Start the photoshops. It was Big A in the study with his cock. Let's get Big A on the line. <laughs> how, how do we get a hold of Big A today? Does he listen every day? Mm -hmm. I want to mm -hmm. see if Big A likes Stalker Patty. Yeah, I'm sure he's uh this would somebody's got to bring some excitement to this woman's life. This would be a mess. There is, do you see what excites her? Sitting in a diner with dollar bills on the uh, counter, probably underneath. What are they underneath? Some kind of plastic or something? Patty? Yes, they. Well, they're hanging up on the wall and everything. They're kind of shellacked, and some of them are kind of loose and hanging up. I right. asked oh. the guy, you don't think somebody would come in here and go plink, plink, plunk? And he says, Oh no, never had a problem. Start stealing <laughs> dollars. <laughs> What does plink, plank, plunk mean? It's the universal you know, like, sound of pulling dollars off the wall. Try to take one, but he says, no, they've never had that situation. If anything, people come Even in grabbing take money in her world sounds depressing. Yeah. Plink, plank, plank plunk. <laughs> and then uh, you, you sit there and she drinks her coffee, and that to her is a real good time. That's a real good time. But you make sure you don't miss the bus, right? Oh yeah, I have a certain time because I, you know, I gotta work. This morning, you know exactly so, you know, where you're supposed to be in order to get home, so you're not stranded there, right? Right. I just stick to a certain bus schedule, and that's it. Tonight I'm going to come home on this one, and that's it, and I'm there. It All would right. be real stupid to not know how to get home and be stranded somewhere. Yeah. I know. Well, I'm the type of a person that might have an on star in my head because no matter where you put me anywhere in the country, in a place I've never been before, I always seem to navigate my way back to where I'm going. Yeah. Oh, like an ant with a leaf in her mouth. She knows where the uh, hole is. All right. We should uh, we should get Big A on the phone. I want to see if there's something going on here. Because mm -hmm. Stalker Patty is kind of leaving the door open. Like there could be something there. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm open to all dates, so really, and with anybody, because you got to get to know people, and I don't think I know enough people. You don't. You, you know, don't know I anybody. Know, you know, and as far as, like, attractions or anything, I just don't have any right now. You're afraid of intimacy. Right You've gone 50 just years with no attractions. Stop it. Just get it over with already. Have sex. <laughs> all right, we'll have to uh, get Big A on the line here, okay? Uh, Isn't that weird? She likes hanging out in the diners like that and drinking her coffee. Brooklyn Diner, this diner in Atlantic City. And she was left as a child 
on the counter in a diner. Ooh. Isn't that odd? Yeah. When she Connection was an there. infant, they, uh, his, her mother put her in a basket and put her on the counter of a diner and just walked out. And she was no wonder raised. she reads the classics. That sounds like the beginning of. I know, she, and she it was, was raised the best of times. It was the worst yeah. of times. <laughs> yeah. She was ra- raised in the foundling home. <laughs> foundling home. She was a foundling. Did that sound uh. like something out of the Little Rascals? <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Who has a foundling home? Apparently, New York does. All right, Patty. Well, someone's on the hotline. Who's on the hotline? Yeah. Mm. Oh, okay. Who's on 11? Who's this? Working in there. Hello, 11? Line 11? <laughs> Hello? Come in, 11. 11? Hello? Anyone there? KDK 12 to KDK 1. All right, I don't know what's going on. Okay. I guess we could take a break and then uh, sure. regroup that. See if they can get uh, Big A. The Big A? <laughs> I saw him outside the building like twice so far. That's not to do with missing the yeah, toe, is right, it? Yeah, right, Derek? No, no that's that, Pat from Monaki. Pat from Monaki is so old. His 15 minutes sort of ran up. With, our new guy is Big A. Big A. Andrew. He's a, a very big guy, a little scary, um, and he drives a, a taxi. It's not even a taxi. It's like he took his car, and he just drives around picking people up, uh, up in the Bronx. <laughs> and that's what he does. And he uh, he gets very nervous, and he's got kind of a speech problem. So he kind of stutters a little, but in between what him you trying find to find the words, people? I know. They just fucking call in? In between trying to find his words, he goes like, well, I drive. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a cab. And Stalker Patty's interested. And he has problems go. with at words that start with S-T. Yeah. He'll go like, well, I was uh, walking up uh, the stairs. It's just Frightening. This is how we discovered him. He was outside the station one day. We were doing something. On oh, we have his clip? Yeah, this is My the God. first time he was ever on our show. All of a sudden, we just okay. uh, talked to the guy. Listen to this. Uh, are you going on the ride today? Uh, um, actually, I just came down here to, to take some photos of everybody and to post on whackbag.com. How come you're not going on the ride? Uh, I didn't plan it. Um, <laughs> It's not too late. Tag along. I don't know who I could, you know, tag along. It was not, but I just hang out. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. That's him. Is film the their best. date. You'll win, like, a, a prize at an independent <laughs> film festival. Those actors were brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so believable. <laughs> Uh, Winning awards at Sundance this year. <laughs> I love you. All right, here we go. We stalled enough. We there got Big is. A on the line. Big A. Yes. Hey, Big A. What's going on? Where are you right now? Um, I'm on 62nd and Central Park West. <laughs> are you having uh, trouble getting around the city with the UN thing happening? Uh, not too much. No, because you keep it uptown, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. What? What? What do you? Uh, that car you drive doesn't look like it belongs to any company or anything. <laughs> right. And you, and you're kind of scary looking. I mean, who the hell's going? Who the hell's taking a ride from you? Uh, anybody who calls Target. I mean, I mean my company. It actually, it's a company, a real company. Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah it is a real company. Yes. And you had to buy the car yourself. No, it's a company car, actually. Wow. You know uh, what he looks like, by the way? I don't want to know. Remember when uh, Danny DeVito <laughs> played the Penguin in Batman? Oh, a little uh, bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> That's exactly what he looks like, man. I gotta go. I have to get ready while I'm on the phone. Stalker wow. Patty, what's going on? Stalker Patty. Yes? Do you have to go? No, no, no. All I'm right. just getting ready to walk out the door. I got ready yes. while I was on the phone. All right. Uh, Big A. Yes. We just want to know if uh, you might have a little interest in Stalker Patty. Yeah, uh, uh, I do, actually. Uh, oh, she's very nice. Were you two hanging out at the uh, B.B. King's uh, appearance? 
Oh, yeah, I saw her at the BB King, and and I had breakfast with her yesterday at um, the Brooklyn Diner. Oh, you had breakfast with her at the Brooklyn Diner yesterday. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, something's nice. going yeah. on. Oh, that's hey. funny. Hey, little sunshine. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Now, Stalker Patty's a 50-year-old virgin. Big A, we never asked how old you were. Um, um, 30, um, 38. 38. Patty, younger man, huh? Wow. <laughs> Patty's got a boy toy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. Well, I'm not sure, so I don't believe in boy toys. All right, well, uh, Big A, are you going to pop the question and ask her out on a, a real date or what? Um, uh, uh, um Patty, uh, would you like to go out sometime? Sure, I'd be happy to go on a date. With we you got a lot of connection. Yeah, I'll go out on a date. This is a no. this is big news for the show, you guys. Huge news. Now, uh, Big A. Yes. Where would you uh, be taking the likes of Stalker Patty for a date? Um. Take it to a diner. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you want to go to Paisano of Mulberry Street, in the heart of Little Italy? Oh. Oh, definitely. The How San Gennaro that? feast is going on, I do believe. They're closing down all the streets down there. You That's can have a nice, right. nice uh, some nice Italian food. Hey, uh, Big A, when was the last time you got laid, by the way? Um, uh, about two years ago, at least. Stalker Patty, you all right with that? His uh, sexual history? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a slut to me. Are you happy with someone so experienced? I'm really down for a day. You have to excuse me. I'm out in the hallway getting on the bu uh, the elevator. I don't oh, wait, know what, what Rikers? No, they're just fixing something in the hallway. The elevator's here. It'll be quieter in a second. What is that banging? What is that thing coming up the stairs? Yeah. They're fixing something around the corner in the hallway. I I'm showing Bill Burr what Big A looks like. Yeah, no. Oh my God! I'm leaving the does that double now. chin quiver when he goes? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> he looks happy though. Oh, he's, he's a happy guy. He was he was waving to all his fans as he was going into the BB King's uh, appearance, the Ron Fez. That picture's cropped too much though. It doesn't show the sweat under that armpit that he's holding up. <laughs> right, right. Uh, you were a little nervous that day. I noticed you sweating a lot, Big A. All right, breaking news on the Opie and Anthony show. Big A has uh, asked Stalker. Patty out on a date. Do we have a, uh, a a day we can do this to send them to Paisanos of Mulberry Street? Stalker Patty, would you? Well, Big A, you better ask her. I can't do the dirty work for yeah, you. Yeah, get to, get to know when she's free and everything. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, Patty. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, so I can take you out at, at Paisanos. That would be nice. I'm free anytime. Just let me know when. Uh, no problem. I'll call you on your cell phone. Okay. That's close good. the deal, man. Get yeah. a date. Yeah, close the deal. Let's go. Yeah, what day? Pick what a day, day man. And, and call her Stalker Patty. That's her real name as far as the show goes. <laughs> I loved this scene when it was in The Other Sister. <laughs> How about on uh, Thursday, my day off? Okay. Sounds good, huh? We'll do a Thursday. What time? What time? Yeah, what time? Well, what time would you like me to be there or meet you? Um, I don't know, 4, um, four 5 o'clock? 5 o'clock would be fine. <laughs> four, for a date, a dinner date at 4 o'clock? 4 o'clock? That's well, not probably, probably well, four or five, you're going into you dinner know. hour anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Both yapping over each other. Yes, I know. <laughs> uh, could you guys come in Thursday, the day of your date? Sure. Both of you guys come in Thursday in, in studio? Of course we can. But it looks like we have a date. Okay. Uh, Big A is going to go out with uh, Starker Patty this Thursday at Paisano's of Mulberry Street in the heart of Little Italy. Could, you want us to uh, bring a chaperone to maybe get some audio? Who wants to... <laughs> We're going to need a chaperone, you know, just for a little while, and then we'll let you two love birds, you know, oh. have some fun. <laughs> All right. Oh, All right. Jesus. This is going to be the most horrific thing to happen in an Italian restaurant since Michael <laughs> shot Salazzo in the <laughs> 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 Nathaniel go with him and record it. 
Nathaniel, you want in? All right, Nathaniel's going to chaperone this. Yes. It's a big date between Big A and Stalker Patty. Oh, yeah, we need the camera to go. We should duct tape some condoms up behind the toilet <laughs> for him to go into at the end of the day. Can I use the b b b b b bathroom? <laughs> Why not? Uh, Big A, any final words to Stalker Patty? Um, I guess I'll see you on Thursday. Oh. Okay, no problem. Just give me a call. Okay, I'll see you there at the studio. Okay. Are we going to meet here? Uh, yeah. Are we going to supply him with transportation and stuff? Oh, fuck no. Oh, come on. We'll get, we'll get him a free dinner. I'm sure Joey will, will give him a free meal. Joey will hook him up, but what, are they going to take a cab down there? Yeah. And then, uh, it, it, wait a minute. What about the video? I'll pay for that cab. Oh, wow. Oh, hey, I'm Bill. In. There you go, huh? Now, I would like for Than, if Than's going, if we could have them in the back of the cab, get right? Get in here, Nathaniel. Nathaniel? How about this we get... a big responsibility. Can we pay one of those bike guys to bike him down? That's a long bike ride. What are they Jesus called? Christ, they don't go that far. <laughs> what are they called? Rim... 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 Oh, yeah, one of those rickshaw guys. Rickshaw. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that's too far. <laughs> it's kind of romantic. Yeah, romantic from fun. here to there? Yeah. They could talk. <laughs> Uh, Nathaniel's in studio. Man. I was thinking, Nathaniel, if you take a cab with these guys, mm -hmm. you're going to have to sit in the front seat. Okay. And turn the camera around so it looks like taxi cab confessions a little bit. Okay. And just have them two uh, sitting uh, on the, in the back seat so you're not there kind of mixing things up. And just get their natural taxi cab conversations. Okay. Right. right. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, so here's the deal. Uh, Nathaniel will shout <laughs> out on Big A. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't call you in, friend. I knew you all right, well, I thought he might have something else to add to the goddamn thing. It'll be funny. There. <laughs> I added. Good idea. Thank you, sir. And uh, they'll come in studio Thursday morning so we can set up the date a little bit, and later that night they'll go down to Paisano Mulberry Street yeah. in the heart of Little Italy, all right? All right, guys. Hello? Yeah, great. All right. Have fun. We'll see you Thursday. Okay. Bye-bye. Right, take care, everyone. Uh, see you Thursday. All right. All right. All right. There he goes. Big A. That guy's radio gold, I'm telling you right now. And Stalker Patty, who has been radio gold for many years for us. Uh, this just in, Paisano's standing room only this Thursday. I'm sure a uh, few listeners will probably go down there and join them for shit. their romantic little uh, meal. Yeah. Yeah, now they know the time, the place, the date. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to turn into an open. And now we won't be able to get a reservation. Fuck her! Fuck her! <laughs> right. What you're going to hear. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, Paisano of Mulberry Street. It's going to turn into the accused. <laughs> He's going to fuck her right there! He's going to fuck her! <laughs> Hey, frat boy, you're next! <laughs> Paisano of Mulberry Street in the heart of Little Italy. Uh, the San Gennaro Feast is going on, I believe. So One of the best times of the year to go down there. Ah, uh, the fall in Little Italy. It's a, it's a great combination. That's right. And you know how crowded it is down there? You walk down the street, it's very crowded. You go into Paisano, you'll sit out on the sidewalk, all the room you want at your table, as you watch the people walk by. Like There's only that. one thing I don't like about it. What? The restaurants are all the way on one side, and then to get to these restaurants, you got to go through the the thing where the guy's like, "Hey, you want to throw some darts for the there sweetheart? You go. Come on, come on, get her a flower, win her some, win her a stuffed animal." Ah, oh, you don't want to buy her a rose? Yeah, I got, I got, I got uh, my little story about the San Gennaro. I'll do it quickly for the people that heard it already. I went down there, gonna have some fun. Uh, they I got games and stuff. It's a bunch of these big Italian guys. Hey, uh, you know, it's San Gennaro. So uh, it was this booth where you threw darts and you had to pop uh, three balloons with three darts uh, to win a prize. I was on a dart league at the time. The darts they give you are pretty <laughs> shitty, but I shoot darts pretty well. Uh, well, they don't have any uh, sharp uh, edges. Yeah. And the balloons aren't inflated enough. Mm -hmm. The guy's going, hey, uh, uh, hey you want to try? I go, no, nah, it's all right. He goes, no, yeah, you on the house. Just give it a try. Just try it. I'm like, all right. I throw three darts. He got, uh, and I popped like two balloons, one bounced off. He goes, try it again. Come on, you're good. So he kept doing it under the guise that it was free. When I go to walk away, he's like, hey, 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 30 bucks. <laughs> it's like, wait, you, you, they were on the house. You oh. kept handing them to me. No, 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 no. On the house. Well, it was a business over here. What do you think? What do you? Th the guy shook me down. And if I try to walk away, forget about it. That would have cracked my head open. I'm like, thanks a lot, paisan. A fucking guy, huh? Stupid. Totally raped me. I did the same thing with the the basketball thing. 
And yeah. I, I punched a guy in Buffalo, and he goes, oh, hey, hey, I don't want any problems. I don't want any problems. It's Buffalo, not uh, and, Little and Italy. I understand. And he gave me my money back, and uh, and uh, and I left. This wow, was, uh, you see what just happened there? Yeah. Oh, we just topped your story. He was a little more manly. I know. No, well, no, it's a true story. I'm a pussy. I know. What am I going to well, say? It, it was, well, it was uh, a I girl. I want you to apologize to Opie. Yeah. <laughs> it, was a, it was a girl I was seeing at, at the time who was in a horrific car accident. Accident. Mm-hmm. Horrific. Broke both legs. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was right on it. I did it to myself. That's terrific. Broke both legs really bad, and she was basically <laughs> in a hospital <laughs> <laughs> and recuperating at home for almost a year. It was that bad. Wow. And she's finally getting out and about again, and I take her to one of these uh, dumb festivals they have in Buffalo, right, and she's crutching along. And... Uh, <laughs> And the, one of these scumbags, they ha, they have no heart, right? All of a sudden, they just uh, they they see her, like she's the uh, she's the injured gazelle, and gives her some. Uh, I think I forgot if it was basketballs or the dumb darts, but the yeah. same type of thing. Like, hey, sweetheart, oh, you're injured, you know. And make a long story short, she's starting to shoot the the baskets and stuff. Same thing. He he wants he wants money out of me. And, and it's like thirty bucks. 25 bucks after you're done, and they do it under the guise that you know it's a little slow. You know, throw a few for free, just for fun. And uh, I'm trying to remember the exact details. I do remember I did punch him in the face because he was insisting that I owed him money. And I go, you scumbag. And he's like, no, no, I, you know, 30 bucks or whatever it was. This goes back at least uh, 12 at least twelve years. So I fucking punched the guy hard. He goes, hey, I don't want any problems, you know, and then let us, <laughs> let us move on. But now uh, Giuliani cleaned it up down there, by the way. And uh, you won't find that scamage going on anymore. That's for sure. Right. Well, it's Paisano of Mulberry Street in the heart of Little Italy. Joey's been with us for many, many years. It's a great restaurant. Oh, I've, yeah. I've been there, I don't know, close to 100 times easily. Yep. Anthony, the same thing. Love it. Uh, I think I'm going to go down there very, very soon, actually. Thursday? Maybe, maybe Thursday. Maybe Thursday. We should pop down there and check it out. <laughs> great Italian uh, cuisine, Anthony. Uh, yeah. Every single pasta on the menu is now under $10. Paisano, uh, you go in there. If Joey's not there, just t- tell anyone in there that... Uh, that uh, you heard about Paisanos from XM and Opie and Anthony, and they'll give you a free glass of wine, okay? Yep. That's a guarantee. It's open weekends till 2 a.m. You can sit out on the sidewalk, people watch. It's a, uh, it's a great spot. Paisano of Mulberry Street in the heart of Little Italy between Grand and Hester. Call 212-965-1188. That's 212-965-1188. I know a lot of people are uh, listening from all over the country, but you're going to be in New York one of these days. Go down there and check it out, okay? Everyone in. Joey likes to eventually. hear from the people that are out of town and heard about this from some faraway land. All right? And this Thursday, it's the place... That uh, Big A is taking Stalker Patty for their first date. First date? For their first date. All right. Paisano of Mulberry Street. Uh, Yes, Ben? Dane is here. Oh, cool. Dane Cook's here. He's going to join the festivities next. You know what we should do as we go to break? Uh, Jim Norton is out in L.A. Bill Burr is sitting in doing an unbelievable job. We're very happy that Bill is sitting in. Don't forget to watch Bill uh, tonight on HBO. His half-hour comedy special is at midnight tonight. Um, but uh, Jimmy is uh, filming an HBO series, and uh, we're trying to keep um, keep tabs on Jimmy. He's going to be calling the program a lot as he goes through this whole process. And he'll be uh, back on the show in a couple weeks for a week, and then he goes out there for another couple weeks. It's a whole complicated thing that's going on. But he called yesterday. That's the point yes, I'm getting to. Yes, he did. Poor and guy. Just in case, because uh, you know people listen to the show at all different times, he called very early yesterday mm-hmm. to give us our first update. Yep. You know, if you remember, he was very happy. He was going out to L.A. He had an apartment all set that his manager got him, and he was ready you know, for the first table read for the HBO series. And he went out there early because Rich Voss is getting married yeah. in Canada. It was a whole thing. So Jimmy called the program yesterday, and uh, just in case you missed it, here it is. All right, we're back with the Opie and Anthony program on XM Satellite Radio. Thanks for checking us out. It's a virus, the ONA virus, spreading across America slowly but surely, getting uh, more gooder every day, I gotta tell you. More gooder. More gooder. Let me set the table here. Jim Norton's out in uh, Hollywood being a star. Bill in Burr's. Cockroach infested apartment. Right. Bill Burr is uh, sitting in and uh, doing uh, quite well for us. Of He's gonna be on HBO tonight. His half hour comedy special is at midnight. We wanna just push that a lot. We want a lot of people to check that out tonight. And now, joining the program, Dane Cook. All right, yeah. Yeah. I like that. First time in studio. I like that applause break off the bat. I'm just here. Listen, I'm going to shave my crotch and then I got to go. So, uh, 
First uh, first time in studio. First time in studio uh, next to Billy Burr, who, uh, Jesus, man, we've done a lot of gigs together. Yeah. But i got to oh, yeah. say, one of my favorite Bill Burr stories. Do you remember the uh, the time you got the uh, the buttered, uh, you remember uh, the buttered roll? biscuit? Uh, uh, di- <laughs> Will you tell that, please? I don't even remember. I was in, like, fucking Lee, Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> there was some fucking horrific gig. And it was one of those deals where it was like a restaurant and there was a function room to the right. It was like some sort of bachelor party was going on. And I'm standing there in front of like eight people going, yeah, what's up with Dan Quayle? Just just eating my balls. And all of a sudden I just look over and I see like these these three fucking evil high school football player looking guys just standing there. And I didn't get what was going on. I'm like, "Uh, guys, there's uh, plenty of seats. Plenty of seats. And I'm just fucking standing there, and all of a sudden, in the middle of one of my jokes, this fucking dinner roll comes in at about at least Mach 4. Oh, <laughs> bangs shit. off my forehead. Oh, and man. then, wow, against the back wall. And I'm fucking dazed, and I turn, all those guys are gone. <laughs> Just sitting there, I got like a welt from a dinner roll. It was a oh. fresh one too. That's how fucking. But it was the butter through. side that hit you too. I remember it was just this butter. <laughs> mark oh, this side thing, of man. Nobody does anything. There's nobody who's running the restaurant does a fucking thing. And I said, like not. another ten minutes sitting there with butter on the side of my face. And I'm how like, long do you think they sat there going, dude? I'm gonna throw a fucking roll at his head. Oh, at that point, dude. I think everybody was thinking of different things they could throw for the rest of the oh, show. No. <laughs> and I, so I'm on the gig, and it was, and then uh, Alan the Monkeys, me, Robert Kelly, and a couple of other guys were in this comedy group. We had to go up later that night, and remember there was a magician, Uh-oh. Jeff Apotheca. Who did magic at the time? Masters of ceremony, <laughs> Jeff Apotheca. So that, like that was his outgoing message, calling this guy for gigs. You have reached Masters of ceremony, and he's fucking Lee, Massachusetts, like he's fucking Billy. But Graham he had like a bedazzled uh, jacket oh, with like God. you know, and so he's got all his uh, stuff set up like previously on stage, like you know all these cards, you know, giant Joker card. And you remember Bob, Bobby just goes up on stage. And because Bobby's set wasn't going great, he just starts picking up this guy's act oh, and like shit. he's pulling the shit out. He's like, "Oh, there's a there's a fake dove in here," <laughs> <laughs> and this guy's just standing there watching Bobby. And he just this is the exact quote. He you you see the color leave his face, and he goes, "My illusions." <laughs> <laughs> My illusions. <laughs> My illusions. Oh. <laughs> that night was the oh, first, the first three, three and a half years of our fucking career. Oh, Every man. night, yeah. running into him in one impossible situation. The fucking Bell Rick in '99s that Ooh. was standing up there, they're like shutting off the Bruins playoff game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um. you guys ready for some comedy? Oh, no. <laughs> the fucking game. Put the game on. Oh, it was better when they le- they would leave a game on for us, but like uh, turn the sound down. So it'd just be like your set going. All of a sudden you hear. Come on! Come on! Me and my brother used to do acoustic gigs uh, in Huntington, and uh, they would do that during the Islander games, and they'd turn the sound down, and you're playing, and sometimes it would coincide right when you finish a song, something would happen, and you'd hear, yeah! And you're thinking, wow, we did did great. And then you look and realize it's just a fucking television, and you stink, and no one wants you there. You nailed it, because I had to do a gig. uh, Robbie Krieger was playing at a stupid rock club. Probably the same rock club you played at. Yeah. One of those, you know, tiny, tiny, tiny little. Yeah, it's Robbie Krieger. Robbie from the Krieger. Door. There's that shithole in Long Beach, I think. I forgot right? the name of it. Uh, <laughs> whatever. Much. So, uh,. I'm the, I'm the DJ. I gotta like do the whole thing, you know, hand out bumper stickers and say, "Hey, everybody, Robbie Krieger," and uh, the place maybe fit a hundred people, maybe, and they had an Islander game on. You guys nailed this, and they wouldn't turn the sound down even for Robbie Krieger. It's they turned Robbie fucking Krieger. I mean, they a turned it down, but doors. you can still hear the game, and people are playing pool. And you, uh, you know, I'm gonna uh-huh. say the exact same thing you did, but yeah, during these. You know, he's just uh, playing without Jim Morrison singing, obviously, just the great guitar riffs, and people are screaming, you know, for the Islander game. What is going through his head at that moment? Right? 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 I was in the fucking doors, man. (laughs) Hollywood Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Fucking rock that place. And now people are screaming for the Islanders as he's playing, you know, Spanish Caravan. (laughs) You ever seen a show? thinking it's Stephen Wright. (laughs) You ever seen a show at the Bowl? Have you seen a a show at the Hollywood Bowl? Uh It's basically like a great show until 9.20, and then there's like this ordinance that they have to turn the fucking volume down to like four. Really? So like mid-show Aerosmith, you're like, this is great. Also, it's just like, whoop. Goes all the way down because the neighbors have this right, thing at 9.20. You can't, uh, they can't crank the music anymore. Oh, that sucks. 
<laughs> That's the worst combo I think ever. Comedy and music, and everybody always tries to get those shows together where it's like, yeah, it's gonna be back in the day. Yeah, you're gonna open, and you know, uh, you know, Juice Newton's gonna come out and do <laughs> 22 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, that'll be great. Like, nobody's there to see me. They're here for Juice. Oh yeah. Speaking of, uh, that's a tough gig opening for a rock band. I, I was gonna say, speaking Singer. of music and comedy, the VMAs. Yeah, we got to get uh, get into that yeah. a little bit. Dane Cook, uh, they gave you what three or four minutes? Uh, th- yeah, it was like it was like two minutes. Two and minutes. It was uh, two and a half hours into. Uh, I mean, that was like a that was like a blitz, man, coming yeah. at you. That was just. I, I was backstage. They had me back um, with with Snoop waiting to go out. And they were like, the guys pushing me. One of the guys, the union guys, are like, you gotta stand right here, stand right here. And I'm, I'm literally up against electricity. Everything is just like <laughs> wires and all the, the backs of the stage. And then I hear, hit the water, because that was the theme: electricity and water. And there's water oh, dripping on me. Before my set, I'm like, I'm getting, I'm getting rained on as I'm leaning on all the wires that are what like are right thinking? around my head. You're like, are you thinking it? You're like, this is, I'm gonna kill or you? <laughs> like, this is just fucking horrendous. The, okay, so first of all, there's there's fireballs going off during everybody's performance. You've got rappers that are threatening each other and sugar, <laughs> sugar been shot the night before. Uh, but a guy with a hooded sweatshirt shot Suge Knight, and oh, so all this stuff's happening. And they got monsoons, and, and you're, I'm standing there like I've got two jokes. And that's about it. I'm like, can I have a sparkler? I'll stick it in my ass. I don't care. Just give me something, you know, body paint. So I, it, it really was one of those things where I was like, either just go out there and, and just, uh, you know, talk about the show. I really kind of wish I'd go in my er- first instinct because I went out there and just ended up playing for the camera. But I wanted to go out there and say, you know what? Fuck you, 50 Cent. Fuck you, Fat Joe. I'm in this thing now. And just, like, try to get involved in, right. their, in their beef. But it was just, like, go out, do it, and get the hell out of there, man. That was, uh, that was oh. wild. And, Bill, you were saying, what, Kelly Clarkson was right before him? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Screeching in that shower. <laughs> That's why I knew. Because I knew he was going to be on. I started out. I'm going to see Dane on this thing. It's going to be fucking great. And, like, I, I was two minutes into the show, I'm like, oh, this is going to be, this is horrifying. <laughs> like, yeah. It was just, like, everybody, half the fucking girls that can't even sing, so they have to add all this extra, they, like, lower them from ceilings. They yeah. come out with yeah. animals and shit. They That's, think if you uh, excite their visual sense... That the, your uh, audio sense won't uh, pick yeah, up like on the fact Ma- that they Mar- stink. Mariah Carey, who can sing, is standing there like a sta- in this pool, and she's got backup dancers who did a backflip into a pool and started dancing underwater with this <laughs> underwater <laughs> camera. Yeah. And then like we we got comedian Dan Cook coming on. I'm like, oh, dude, this is gonna be fucking horrific. <laughs> and everybody right around the front, like all these kids, they were flipping out. And I just remember at one point, sometimes you just see random stuff during your set where you're like, you're trying to. You're, you're, you're in your head. You're trying to figure out. And I looked down, and there was a kid just smacking his own face. I'm like, I don't know he's on E. or right, right. This is just like the new way to clap. But he's like, he's just standing. He's like, yeah. And he's smacking himself over and over. He's like, in the face. Hit me in the face. Isn't that great when you can, you, you don't, you're not looking at the, because everyone assumes you're looking at the big picture. And a lot of people say, oh, the lights are in their eyes, so you really don't see the crowd. Oh, yeah. There are sometimes you do just pick out one, one person, person. Oh, yeah. or one event that's going on, a fight, a conversation. And even though you're going through the motions and you're saying or you're singing or you're doing whatever you do up there, you're thinking, what the fuck is going on out there? <laughs> and it never comes across on stage because you're a professional, you're doing what you do. But you're looking and going, that is the most fucked up thing yeah. I've ever seen it. This should really distract me. <laughs> I did a college gig uh, a couple months ago, and there was a girl in the front row. I swear to God, this girl looked 14, but she's showing her titties <laughs> during the show. And it was like, it was great because it was titties, but I'm like, this girl's like literally 14 years old. She, she was like the Doogie Hauser of this college. She was just like, she, she was advanced from eighth grade to like... <laughs> Cake party. <laughs> in every way, apparently. <laughs> yes. Wow, that's Ooh. funny. You so, guys all have nightmare stories, though. I haven't seen one comic that went, Every gig's been gold since oh, I no. started. Mm-mm. There's always a fucking nightmare or eight. And it, it never ends, either. No, huh? Even if you keep doing college gigs, it never ends. Yeah. It never did, ends. Did Bobby ever tell you the uh, the the Boston Garden gig when we played the, the... We did the Rock of Boston show back when they were doing that every year? It was the biggest bomb gig we'd ever done. And, it and, was, and Bobby was probably so psyched. Oh, Bobby was, I mean, he was, uh, it was the group again. We were doing this, uh, you know, every year they did the Rock of Boston, and they're like, we're going to put you on, again, music and comedy. Yeah, You're going to be on right uh, right before Fish. It's two, two hours Uh-oh. into the show. Uh-oh. It was like, Extreme's going to go on, 
And, and, and you. you. I was actually in the in the crowd for that. I don't even know why. No, you're really? always at the worst possible uh, situation. <laughs> I swear to God. I was like, I'm going to tune in. I'm like, don't fucking tune in, Burr. When Billy says I'm going to be at the gig or tune in, I know I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that was early on. He didn't. No, I was like everyone else. I was going there for the music. And right, then like I, everyone I, I, else. I already like, had, I already had tickets. Fuck. At least he's being honest. No, I didn't know that they were going to be on that. And yeah. then all of a sudden, it's just like, yeah, dude, we're going to be doing that. So literally, it was one of those things. Two minutes into the show, I'm like, how the fuck are they going to do like, imp there's like 20,000 people there. Oh, like, man. We're on, like this improv group. They bring us out, okay, and when they first announced that we were going to go out and, and uh, you know, and perform, people didn't know we were comedy. I think they thought we were like an acapella group. So at first, everyone's like, ah, and we're like, we've arrived, man. Oh, they, they really care. So we get out there. We've got these <laughs> awful lapel mics on. There's four of us. And uh, I'll never forget, Bobby's up there, and Bobby goes up to the mic, and he's like, uh, yeah, we're going to do some improv. We're going to blah, blah, blah. And it's just, it's the garden, so the sound is, is awful. It's just echoing. You can't hear anything anyone's nothing, saying. Nothing. In about a minute in, you feel the entire, like, you feel <laughs> people oh, no. looking at each other going, they're not going to sing. They're, like, trying to do comedy. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it was like three, two, one, and all of a sudden, Lighters, oh, a, a million lighters, just came like whipping in lighters and shoes. <laughs> People I'm, sacrificing so was, no, their was, shoes. That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, yeah. I'm getting pelted with lighters, but I'm like, did they bring extra shoes to throw? Or are they so angry that, they're taking that they don't shoes? even care they're going to be walking home without Dude, shoes? I mean, upper deck shit littering. Wow. They, you, we got, you guys were in that, uh, that, that, that kung fu bit. Oh, and Al God. would stand off stage. He remembers do, the bit yeah, and the voices. And they were like, ha, ah, we'll kill you now. And, you know, we're acting and, and out. All right, acted that, out with somebody else times. doing the same. Oh, no. And so we get, we're getting hit and all this stuff. And and then finally, you know, we're hitting Shana na na right at that point, right? It's, you know, hey, 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 goodbye. Hey, 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 goodbye. Yep. Bobby goes up to the mic and he's like, I want to say something. something oh, something. no. And they actually oh, shut God. up. The whole crowd, like, <laughs> stops. And I'm like, Bobby's my hero at this point, right? I'm staring at this kid. He's got his long Rico Suave hair down to his fucking asshole, oh, yeah. right? He's looking like Crystal Gale. And he's like, I want to say something right now. And then everyone shuts up and he goes, we didn't come here to ruin your night. Oh, oh no. He starts, he you know, Bobby didn't. starts getting, like, defensive. Yeah. And then he goes, like, he goes, and we're going to leave. And, of, co and of course, they're like, yeah. yeah. And he goes, after the next two skits that we're here to do, and it was like more lighters and shoes. Holy shit, what a nightmare. <laughs> wow. A set of balls walking up to the mic oh, like that. No. Though. That oh. is really funny. Oh, and it's music like and home comedy. turf for him. No more music and comedy, please. No, especially Ever. like a fish show. Just laid back. And comedy, and especially improv comedy. You need the crowd to be focused on yeah, you. You don't want to do it in front of a bunch of potheads. Like, you can't get a concert crowd to pay attention all at once to the band that they were yeah. there oh, singing. Yeah. They're talking, they're smoking, they're doing whatever the fuck they do. For comedy, it's like, unless you have a, a huge portion of that audience focused on you, yeah. you're done. No, we're asking them, we're like, uh, we need an appliance, and like millions of people yeah. are like, Justin! Yeah. Like, we can't even, <laughs> I think I heard, I think I heard a microwave. I yeah. think I heard, it's like, I think I heard a thousand people yelling shit at us right now. We, <laughs> ugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you're but playing these are the gigs, gentlemen, that well, yeah. build now your character. Now you're says. playing the guard in there, uh, Dane Cook. Last night, show number one at the... Oh, uh, how was it? It, it was, was It was amazing. It yeah. was, uh, I think, that tonight. Okay, we get two tonight. And it's just was that the be. biggest show of your life, you think? Uh, no, it was... Uh, we did the tour guys and tour, and we did some pretty big venues there. Yeah. And I did that Gator Gras last year, which was uh, 50,000. I don't know if you've done that. That's pretty, that's pretty no. cool. Um, What's so your audience made up of a lot? A lot of, it, yeah, it's pretty got? mixed up. I mean, mixed. it's definitely that college uh, college core, but no, I look out and it's uh, it seems to be all over the board. You yeah, know? you got a lot of chicks though that like want to fuck you and things like that. A lot of girls, yeah, they wear t-shirts with my joke, which is really great because like half the time I'm just kind of going off the cuff anyway. So I'll look down, and I'll I'll see titties with like fuck bees on it, and I'm like, oh, I'll do that next. <laughs> <laughs> some, some 14 year old girl who hasn't lifted it up yet. Hey, let's uh, say hi to Ryan in New Jersey. Oh, Saw man. Dane Cook last night. Ryan, what's up? What's up, dude? Dane, man, you fucking ruled last night. Dude. Hey, thanks a lot, man. Thanks for coming out, dude. Yeah, dude, Bob Kelly ruled, too. Uh, my girlfriend doesn't even like O&A and, and none of that shit, but last night, man, she fucking way. loved Kelly, loved you, and now I think she's an O&A fan. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Oh, that's good. Good deal, man. It's hard to get the girls on, but see, you, you, you got it knocked. You know, the yeah. girls are there with you. You got a very uh, diverse crowd. Mm -hmm. Us, it's a cock it's, fest. Uh, it's just yeah. like, 
Yeah, fucking A, guys. And the girls, they hate it. And I don't know what we're doing. We're trying to soften our delivery a little bit so we can have more women out there. Yeah, that's <laughs> not working at all. Let's bring some girls down to the studio. We're going to do hugs. We're going to do free hugs every hour. Come on down. Well, we noticed since Jimmy's been gone the past couple of days, girls have warmed up to us That's a little right. Bit. We had girls in the studio that were willing to take all their clothes off, which is always a good thing. Uh, a girl called up to play Guess What's in My Pants. Uh, Jimmy We had a strap-on show the girls. other day. Jimmy <laughs> scares girls away. They walk in, and he looks like he's going to be a problem. He looks like he looks like no matter what they do, he's gonna want to go one step more than they're willing oh, yeah. to go. Yeah. Like they could want to take that. Like the girls the other day, they came in completely naked, took that wiffle ball bat right up there, lubed it up, and stuck it right inside them. And we measured how deep it went. Everything fine. With Jimmy, they're probably thinking he's gonna want to stick it up my ass. <laughs> like just that one step where it's probably going to be a problem yeah. so they don't even want to get started <laughs> when you think about what jimmy talks about and then you wonder what the skeletons are in his closet <laughs> yeah what could there possibly yeah, be he's in there something something back, he's got to right. be holding something right. back, it right. has to involve murdered children <laughs> is all it's all i could imagine it's got to be kids death rape he's just going to have like another room that he's dug out in his basement or something like that but he's just got him down there bound and gagged and <laughs> tries out his new bits on him what a little creep. <laughs> By the way, speaking of Bob Kelly, he gave us the the famous cast. All right. Oh, yeah. How's that going on the auction? Uh, Yeah, on our ONA auction. It's up to broke 13, knee, man. $1,300. Nice. nice. For I broke, broke my knee, man. I broke my knee, man. I broke my knee, man. man. Hold my hand, man. Dane Cook obviously was there when that happened, filming the Torgasm thing. I've never heard any horrific sound like yeah. that in my life. That was Wasn't just, that, just uh, bad. that pop. And, then, and when you see the video that goes with it, it's just... Uh, it's crazy. Bobby he had the ground, no business, no business playing football. We did. None of us did. Man. Nah, here's, here's you, what was stupid. You could. I'm the, telling the, you, we were playing on uneven terrain in like a gravel pit. You know, we were just like, oh, we'll throw a ball around, and then we got competitive. It, it was not flat like a field. It was really like hilly, and it was just we were <laughs> <Yeah>. dumb. <laughs> We were dumb, but Bobby tried to, you know, go up and do some kind of like Yeah, he's uh, trying to really... Heisman fucking catch. <laughs> no, Bobby gets crazy when he plays sports. I remember one time I was playing against him, and he, he wasn't having a good day or something. I had a couple of catches, and he just, he just, he's hilarious. He's just competitive, so he got mad at me. So I just see the look on his face that he wants to take me out on this play. So he came at me, and somehow I was able to push him down to the ground, and he landed oh, on the no. ground. He got, he, he was so mad that he grabbed two handfuls of grass... Ripped him out of the ground, and he got up and he just threw him at me. <laughs> and they went about 90 miles an hour for two two inches, and then they went. <laughs> right in front of me. I just remember this this black kid who was on my team goes, "Yo, he bugging." <laughs> he had to go back to the huddle. He's trying to hit you with like confetti. Uh, oh yeah, he was unbelievable. What is that gonna do? The rage, angry little he's, guy. He's the most competitive guy I know, and I, I admit I'm I'm pretty competitive. But we had a when we used to have a game back in '93. I don't know if Bill, you were part of this awful, horrible thing. It was called punch each other in the asshole. <laughs> Uh, no, I would have remembered that. Like, yeah. That's something you don't forget. Okay, so we started this thing <laughs> where we would just start randomly, if you know the other one was walking in front of you up the stairs, oh. we would not just punch. Ow. We would uppercut and try to hit taint, try to hit anything we could. <laughs> Full tilt boogie punch into your asshole. And it became like Bobby and I being so competitive about it that we actually had to sit down, I'll never forget, to sit down and have a very serious conversation about it where it involved us looking at each other going, we gotta stop punching each other. <laughs> this is really like, can we just, can we call it even? Are we, you know, we have to stop doing this. And we couldn't. I mean, for the longest time, we just still had to like, and we, and we wanted to make each other like shit our pants. It was like a full, <laughs> like a real, like the hardest hit you could imagine. I want to know how that starts. One of you had to come up with it. You didn't both come up with the idea at the same exact time. Who punched? Who's asked and it's first. pretty brave for the, the person. Do, I was gonna say it's pretty brave for the person to introduce that to other guys. Yeah, hey yeah, guys, I got a great new idea kind of for original. us to pass I mean, the pod. I, would, I would think to do the uh, the classic leg sweep. No, if yeah, was yeah, in front yeah. of me. I would we, never. We think. used to do blindside tackle. You know, one guy would like you know be on all fours behind someone, and then you knock him over the guy. Oh yeah. You know, no. with that, when he then was the bottom of the shoe kick when you're behind somebody and they're walking, they step oh, yeah, the and you kick the bottom of their shoe and they 
they f- they do like a Nazi goose step with one foot. <laughs> it goes flying. Or the flat tire where you just step on the back of right. their shoe and take off their uh, the, Achilles the tendon. cross check into the locker. Yeah. He'd be looking down for his notebook. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Those unforgiving metal <laughs> yep. lockers. I like the coin slap. Anytime somebody's counting their change, they're like, what do you think I can? You just get underneath. It's just like this rainbow of currency. <laughs> you had your guys doing a lot of activities on tour there. I saw the uh, yeah. I saw the scooter we race. I slept all day. I mean, that was the thing. It was like, these guys hated me because I'm going, every day we're going to get up, you know, just for the sake of filming during the day, you know, because we'd sleep until, you know, you know the crack. They had some three. mean things to yeah. say about you, though, there, Dane. That you were working Don't them hard it. in between shows, <laughs> horseback riding. Uh, what else? Oh, we you guys trashed do? Bob for that shit. Yeah. Uh, I, like, I opened the for football. Charlie Murphy, but yep. no point. Oh, that's did what he, it did was. Did he right? make me do activities? My, <laughs> my, my, my day was mine. He didn't call me up. Yo, we're playing checkers this morning. <laughs> Get your ass down here, bitch. <laughs> it looks like it's gonna be a great video when it finally comes out. I I was watching the video portion of your pack, your package. Jesus, the Dane Cook CD DVD yeah. thing on the way to L.A. With the shorties and uh, and the preview for Torgasm, it looks like it's going to be a good thing when it finally. Everyone's comes out. been saying that, saying that that you got you got a, a, a clip of uh, Bobby laying on the ground. It's something about Bobby with his yeah, knees just or, screaming and stuff. Yeah, yeah we have that. On, we knee. filmed that and uh, the in, scooter race though. I saw uh, who took a dive on that. Was that, that you? That was me, man. Yeah, that was really nasty. That was day one, and uh, we had you know we had these little electronic scooters, and it was just uh, you know it's going to be great. We're going to be racing again, me and Bobby. Let yeah. Me, and, uh, and Bobby, st- very competitive again, sticks his fucking foot right back into my tire. <laughs> <laughs> he says he didn't do it on purpose, but if you look, you kind of see him kind of look back, and I think he aimed it so he could jam my tire, and I, of course, went over and cracked it. Uh, electric scooters, and Bobby's I'm like, a, no. acting like it's the road warrior. Bobby is a winner. He will f- yeah. He will figure out how yep. to come on, out on top. Yeah. He hates to lose. Yeah. Go for him. <laughs> very competitive. Yeah, yeah we did. That, we that did activities. On, uh, Kimmel. That's right. I saw it on Kimmel. Yeah. Is that where that was at? Yeah, okay. just yeah. face first through the it, asphalt. And Dink, you were in Rolling Stone recently. The CDs like sound like crazy. What is it up to now? Because we've all been paying attention going, holy shit. Um, the first week it was like, what, close to a quarter million copies sold or something yeah, like that? But I think it's... I, I like the... Yeah, I, we went gold. We went gold. I like the I don't know when they know the exact number. Barry Katz <laughs> knows exactly how many of units. Of course he does. <laughs> he knows exactly. But the gold, CD, really? The CD's gotten gold. Yeah, it went gold. Yeah. You can't really and, uh, call it a CD because you have the DVD in there and all sorts of stuff. But yep, yeah. And what is, what is the way that? Half, it. half a million? It's gold or a million? Uh, well, with a double album, uh, uh, we've shipped almost 500,000. So Jesus. once you hit 250, that's gold wow. on a double. And then platinum is probably a few weeks away. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. I know, I, man. I sold three of my CDs off my website. Today. I bought oh, them. And proud. I bought pretty, two of them. I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> you want them back? It's just amazing because people aren't... People are just not... I'm going to autograph them to you. People are just not buying CDs, obviously, like they used to. So a comedy CD, CD to sell that much, that's just phenomenal. Yeah, somehow the CD, I've noticed, like I said, in, in, in like the last few months, all of a sudden you go to a college and it's like you're holding up like a fucking eight track Oh, you were saying that yeah, the other day, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, oh, now they all want, like, a DVD, because they can get the shit from free somehow, you know? Yeah, yeah, somehow. Just ask uh, Steve. He knows. Let's say hi to... Burn anything for us. Yeah, Mike on Long Island. Mike, what's up? Hey, uh, boys, how you doing? All right, what's up? Good. Dan, I was at a show last night. Wonderful job. Thank you, dude. Um, How do you feel when people applaud for bits you're about to do? Oh, yeah. Uh, Uh, All you said was, oh, I went to a party, and the place blew up. Right. Right. I, I mean, you know what? It's 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 flattering, of course, when people, you know, kind of hear their, you know, you feel like a little like Bon Jovi. It's like, you guys know bad medicine? And everybody just starts. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, that's why, dude, I, I like to kind of, um, I always try to improvise with stuff and, and, uh, and, and really not really know exactly where I'm going with it because at least that makes it interesting. If you've heard the bit before, there's something in there you're like, oh, I never heard that part or... Uh, it, it takes on kind of a new energy with every crowd, but it's it's cool, man. It's definitely. Uh, I did that one bit last night where I I threw the mic out and they finished the. Uh, I did the setup and then they finished the uh, the punch and that was. I've never really done anything like that. Wow. That was kind of wild. Yeah, we've Jeez. talked to Brian Regan about that. He goes, it's frustrating when people are yelling out the punchline of jokes. Saying, cup of dirt, do cup of dirt. And Brian's like, well, that's the punchline. Punch yeah. All right, I'll do it. Big yellow one's the sun. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, <laughs> it's it's weird. I mean, even like I know you know I was reading all those things with Chappelle before he he um, went into, into hiding, where it was like people were just coming and just I'm Rick James, bitch, and it's like yeah, that must have just been all over the place. It's it, it's a blessing and a curse because you dream as a comic of doing something that mm-hmm. people actually give a shit about quoting at all, and yeah. so you want that your whole career, and then when they do it. You realize, oh man, it's it's sometimes it can throw off the the flow of the show. But at at this point, I, I'm I'm digging it. I, I, you, I well, you got to be, and I it's great it. to to be uh, huge and on top like that. Are you thinking about uh, something like burnout or you know overexposure, shit like that, where you go, uh oh, you know what do what do you do about that? I'm just uh, at this point, it's I mean really things are just starting to roll, so I'm certainly Enjoy not the ride, th- yeah, yeah. I'm just you know whatever uh, I got to ah. take it right to the end. You He's know? going into movies next. Is that it? Yeah. Do some flicks. Yeah, yeah. He offers. He'll be the yeah, next. Yeah. yeah, he'll be the next guy that just leaves his comedy behind and <laughs> never leave comedy <laughs> behind. And does man. the movie thing. No, I definitely am going to start doing some more uh, hmm. more flicks. But uh, awesome. you know, comedy is. How comedy many is lame offers have you had for like sitcoms and movies that are just like stop it? I, I here's the worst pitch I ever had. A guy brought me in a few years ago, and he goes. Um, we're really excited. We want, to, we want you to do this shit. <laughs> I'll never forget. Look at it. I wanted to fucking kill you, man. I got Barry next to me. Well, can we like, get Barry on gonna, the air? Barry, we love when oh, you come Barry, on the air with us. Come this on. This is going to be the best pitch you've ever had. Everyone heard, imitates right? Barry, and when we do it, no one understands who we're imitating. Well, but he, but we he, have him in studio today. So. You, have, you have to see him. He's the only guy I know who wipes his teeth while he's talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so the guy brings us in, and he goes, Here's the show. And this was the actual pitch. He goes, Okay, you're a teacher. You're like a, a substitute teacher. And so far, I'm like, okay, that hasn't been done, you know, a million times. But, yeah. And he's like, and the kids love you, um, but here's the deal. You're magic. What? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I do magic. He's, no, no, no. You're magical. You're Mr. <laughs> Wiz. That was the name of the show. Mr. You're Mr. Wiz. Wiz. And he had, he had me driving, like, a rainbow VW bug. And I do my spells on the kids, and I mean, it was just I, wow. I sit there and hear this. <laughs> you're like, have you seen my stand up, first of all? Am I doing wow. anything like what you're talking about? Mr. Wiz. I'm Mr. Wiz. Every I, week. I think I was on notice for a month after that. And well, you <laughs> should have been. Like Barry set up the man. That is horrible. <laughs> and, and what year was Barry. this about? Buddy, this you're going to be a big star. <laughs> 90, like 98 or 90. I don't know. 98. It was, just, well, it was you know, bad. You know, it just would have been bad effects. Like bad cheap sitcom uh, special effects for your magic. Yeah, where you stay still. <laughs> yeah. And they and then they put the other person who's supposed to appear around you, but that you but you moved see that you a <laughs> little bit in between. Uh, so. <laughs> Some awful time slot. You're on right after Sabrina, the teenage witch. Yeah. <laughs> That's your lead in. You've made two of yourselves, and you have to talk to each other, and there's got to be a wall line between the two of you. There's always a talking, where they superimpose you. <laughs> talking animal. I got like a llama as a pet, <laughs> and he, he's got those real creepy mannequin eyes and. <laughs> wow, that is a bad pitch. You got to think people are joking at first when you sit there and they come up with these pitches and you're like, "All right, this is a joke. They're doing some kind of a punk show or something." I actually, uh, I had uh, some guy pitch something to me a few months ago again with these guys, and I thought they were fucking with me. I really, really thought. Yeah, yeah this is, sometimes you get guys who who pitch and they. They have phenomenal ideas, and they've they've actually written and produced and the million million dollar things that have gone on. But they are so nervous when they pitch that they look like they're having a seizure when they're pitching. <laughs> <coughs> that was the one you're talking about. Yeah, the guy was sweating, and I mean, he's just rambling on and on. There's no rhyme or reason. It was, uh, but uh, it was that was a real idea. It was a real idea, but the guy literally had to carry him out of there. <laughs> yeah. I was on notice again. Yeah. I'm sure. yeah. All right, you're hanging, right, Dane? Yeah. We're going to take a break. What are we promoting today, Barry? Because Dane's not going to do it. Uh, retaliation, baby. It's Retaliation. Incredible. It's out there, and it's so And like you can crazy. come by the show. There, there. We may, we might release a few tickets uh, that people don't mm-hmm. show up for for guest lists and things like that, like if your people don't show up. No, I'm going. We're all going tonight. I'm serious. We're all going to go see uh, Dane. Uh, it's going to be a kick-ass show tonight, definitely, yeah. without a doubt. All right, more with Dane Cook. Also on the way, we got Martha Stewart and uh, P. Diddy rapping together. Oh, this is... Uh, we got to do this while you guys P. are in studio Diddy. today. He, you know, he, I keep saying, wow, that guy's got no street cred, but he lost it so long ago. When he, Now, though, when he's rapping and teaching Martha Stewart how to rap, hip words and... 
Yeah. He's got his own line of craftsman tools that he just released. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Yo, <laughs> let me tell you about my wrench. <laughs> yeah, that's, some, that's the snoop. <laughs> the snoop with the golfing and the snoop is the worst. Uh, uh, let me tell you, it locks on to the nut. It's I know, you wonderful. Know Rap is where like heavy metal was in like 1990 when like oh, winger and all right. those groups are coming. It's over. Yeah, they used to be scary. It was something that was just like everybody needs a sidekick. Snoop was so scary oh. until he's like, let's go golfing, Aya Fizzle. <laughs> it's like <laughs> golfing, Lee Iacocca. If you could find a better dizzle, buy it. What? No, oh, stop. No, Snoop, stop. What are you yeah, doing? No, it's so not scary now. No. You just, why not? It's a little soft shoe there falls us. It just does, <laughs> it comes off so bad. Lee Iacocca. Stop. All right, more with Dane Cook. As we go to break, I think we're going to play the Broke My Knee Man song. <laughs> oh, I haven't heard this. Yeah, the listeners really ran with this they one, ran. man. man oh, when you got great. us the audio of uh, Bob Kelly breaking his knee, there were remixes. Did you ever hear the good, fel the good Fellows? I thought was oh, a good one. I did hear that. One too. I did hear that, yeah. Are you here? Uh, well, let's play it really fast. It's only 40, uh, like 50 seconds. Listen to this first. Look, he started to touch me. He started to grab me. I told him to stop. He didn't stop. I hit him back. And then he got really angry. <laughs> he pushed me out of the car. What do you want, fucko? You want something? Huh? What are you doing? Oh. Oh, fuck! I broke my knee, man! Fuck! Oh, my fucking mother! If you touch her again, you're dead! Oh, hold my hand, man. I gotta squeeze some. fuck! How good is that? Oh, my God! That's classic! That came in from one of our listeners. That's the best one. We got... Damn, is that the best? We had... I can't even tell you how many came in, Dane. I totally forgot about that one. Oh, the immigrant song? A couple dozen. <laughs> you want to play the immigrant song? Uh, one please. All right, listen to I this. I have to get these on Diz. <laughs> I broke it. Aren't we great friends? Uh, <laughs> we're great friends. I gotta oh. squeeze something. That's but, what Bobby kept saying. Yeah. Oh, I gotta go hold my hand, oh, man. Oh god. And the you got the video that'll brutal. be part of the tourgasm yeah, video man, when that'll it hits. Be, that'll be on there. We're putting it together. Do we have another that one? That alone is worth it. You should oh. put, you should throw some of these remixes on uh on something. I don't god know what. Damn. But. They is are heartless, one? the listeners. They don't care that he's injured. They just see an opportunity oh, <laughs> for something funny. <laughs> Was the sheep one good? I don't know. This might yeah, play that real fast. It's only like fifteen seconds. Steve, you got to throw all these on a, 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 a CD for Dane. I really have cast. to injure Bobby again. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was it. Uh, I, we have so many. I'm trying to remember some of the better ones. Oh, God. That yeah. Goodfellas one is so goddamn that's, that's funny. It fits Christ perfectly. The best one ever. Mm -hmm. I have to say, man, the thing that, you know, i got to give Bobby props. Anybody else would have left that tour that oh, night. No. And he got back on a like a non-stop moving bus, and he's on there with his fucking wobbly leg, and so uh, he 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 hung in there, man. That right. was great. We'll play the "Broke My Knee" song uh, going into break. Maybe some more remixes, but definitely more with Dane Cook in just a bit. All right, very very busy day on the Opie and Anthony program today. Bill Burr in studio. Definitely want to remind people, Bill's uh, half-hour comedy special on HBO is tonight at midnight. Make sure you check yeah, out Bill Burr. Yeah, here's tomorrow night at uh, midnight, too. Well, I got the on-demand, so I'll be watching it Sunday morning Ooh, when slippers. I wake up. In your slippers. And, of course, Dane Cook playing Madison Square Garden tonight. It's a nice little uh, room. Not bad. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> playing the garden. Where is that? It's no Carnegie Hall, <laughs> but it's... Uh... No one's got to ask that. I'm playing the Chuckle Hut. Where is that? <laughs> right. I, it's not, I'm playing the garden. How, is that the... What garden? <laughs> the fucking garden. That's fantastic. I think last time, who said it? Uh, it's great to not have the words ha-ha and the phone number. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. And, of oh, course, yeah. the CD slash DVD is called Retaliation. Dane yeah. Cook. 
selling like hotcakes. Yes. Were hotcakes ever really selling? <laughs> was there like a time in history when it must hot have cakes been. were just <laughs> just for, for that saying to be there? That must have been one time where we're like we're fresh out again. Jesus, they they comedy sold. clubs really do have some of the worst fucking names. I worked to play oh. side splitters. Side <laughs> splitters. Like, why don't you just call it knee slappers? <laughs> Gay club that I had to play years ago. Remember fiddlesticks? Yeah, Did you ever play that. Stick. Fiddlesticks. Yeah. <laughs> then I'll be at guffaws. Oh, we had to, we had to take a break just to take leaks and stuff, but the stuff that was happening during the break was really entertaining as well. Dane met uh, the lead singer of Missing Persons. Uh, Bill was talking about Scary Spice. Oh, opening up for Winona Judd. Just talking about <laughs> Winona Judd outside at a racetrack at like twelve in the twelve noon. Yeah, twelve noon at a racetrack. There. The cars or a horse. What was it? A horse. Horse it was track. Like a horse track. And I'm standing up there just bombing. You can't shit on the crowd because no. it's her audience, and you don't you don't want to you need the gig at that point. Yeah. So you're doing yep. it. And I'm standing there. There's people kind of filing in, and there's this lesbian, biker looking chick. My whole set, she's just standing there chanting, "Why no no? Why no no?" <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and you just want to be you fucking whore. You just want to go off on her, and you can't. You got to be actually cordial. How do you yeah. Feel like a do that? like a like a game show host. How do you not first of all have a nervous breakdown before you go out on stage? And how do you even step out onto that stage? That's where learned... you comics, I don't even know how. Yeah. People ask me, they go, why don't you try stand-up? Like, are you insane to have to do something like that where you know the gig is a fuck? It's noon at a horse oh, race track yeah. to a crowd that wants to see Winona Judd, and you actually make your legs work and walk out onto a stage. How I, do you do? I literally learned how to bomb gracefully on that gig. I'll never forget it. I was sitting there. I was just eating my balls, <laughs> just feeling like an asshole. And somewhere in the middle of it, I swear to God, I just started imagining Patrice O'Neill, Keith Robinson, and Jim Norton sitting in the back watching me, <laughs> laughing at me. And I somehow started laughing at myself. How fucking ridiculous. I mean, I was in the middle of my set at one point. I don't know where they all just go, ah, and screamed. And I'm like, you know, I thought my fly was down. I turned around. Way in the background was a carnival. And some guy was on that ride where you get shot into the fucking air. And I guess that oh, went up, no. up and over me from behind. I just Great. started doing this self-deprecating how pathetic my career was. And I was able to t handle that lady I, in a roundabout way, called her a lesbian, which, of course, the whole country audience loved. Yeah. I, I said something about her haircut, how short it was. And people knew what I was alluding to. Uh -huh. So, you know, country people, fuck the queers. <laughs> I, 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 got, I got him on my side. But no, it was just, it was brutal. <laughs> I just, I have no clue how you do that. Be That's what I do now. Case. Anytime yeah. I'm horrible, I just picture up, Dane, I'll picture somebody I know just laughing. <laughs> yeah, just, that's a that's good how, one. That's how you, yeah. you, you got through, like, the beginning ones. Like, as you're going, going up at the fucking Bell Rick in 99 and the game's on, <laughs> it's like... You, you, I've been watching him bombing, and it's like you want to laugh, but it's like you know you're going up there too. It's like yeah. you got an ass kicking coming, so you're almost yeah. you're almost jealous. Like fuck, these guys love when he's, he's going to be he's done. He's getting it over with. He's these halfway guys, through it. These guys love when their own bomb. That's the one thing I learned, uh, you know, hanging out with a lot of comedians. You guys love when someone's eating. Yeah, it. it's you almost absolute. It's, it's like sport to you guys. Oh yeah, it's, it's fair game time. with each other. It's almost yeah. like you know the way black guys can call each other the n word and like it's cool. Like comics can be like, dude, you stink, you bombed, <laughs> yeah. and it's like, yeah, it was good, huh? <laughs> but anybody else says it. Do you know? Uh, do you know like the worst heckle like you've ever gotten? Do you do you keep that on tap? Like the worst thing that oh, anybody's yeah. ever yelled. Oh, really? like, uh, most bizarre one I ever got. I was at Dangerfield's third show. On a Saturday night, there's like fucking 30 people there. That place is oh, the worst to do comedy here. So there's these three angry white dudes in the back, and you just can feel Ghosts their rage. Ghosts are walking out during your set. It's a, it's yeah. a, it looks like a funeral <laughs> home, man. I know. It's like you can just feel the rage in these guys. And I hear them talking, and I know they're fucking talking about me. And I'm like, dude, don't go there. Don't talk to them. I just, oh, no. After a while, I just couldn't. I finally just said, you guys, what, what's your problem, man? You just, you just... You're just talking. You know, what, what's what's going on? And this dude, this most bizarre heckle ever, he goes, anything red and on stage is a faggot. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just, it was so fucking bizarre. I, I didn't even have a comeback to it. that? <laughs> but it was like brilliant. And I was sitting there going like... I, and he was so angry the way he said it. I knew if I just said one thing back to him, I had a fist in my face. Yeah. So I somehow had to just go back into my act. So, so I got a computer recently <laughs> and just completely blew it off. <laughs>
I had a guy at uh, Dublin's shit. one night. He was sitting in the front row. And uh, he was really, really despondent, and he's drunk, and he's talking to himself. And he turned his chair away from the stage, mm -hmm. but he's right up front, so he's facing oh, the wow. crowd. He, he's like doing little monologues to himself and trying to like like the shows on him. And I, same thing, I'm like, dude, what's your problem? What's your problem? Three or four times, and he keeps like shrugging me off. And I finally go, I go, I go, really, man, what is your problem? And he stands up, and he, the whole place goes quiet because he's holding a bottle in his hand. I think somebody thought he was going to throw it. And he goes, I've got seven problems. And you're five of them. <laughs> wow. That's really fucking genius. <laughs> did he name them? Did he name the five? I, he, no, he never even got into it. Uh, I, I, we did actually get to a little... Uh, a, yeah. I think I... I we, wow. we had a little fight up front. Why but, are those people there? Like, I don't get why they're even there. I've been to comedy clubs, and I've seen comics that just have sucked. And you sit... And wait for the next guy. Yeah. It's that why? Ugh. Why do people feel compelled? You fucking suck. You're an asshole. I'll tell you what are the best. Like you go up in front of an all black crowd. It's like what I quickly learned is they're gonna have fun with you or without you. So <laughs> either you, you make them laugh. It, it's the when you bomb from a black crowd. It's like the joke bombs. There's nothing, and then everybody laughs that it got nothing. I remember one time just eat, was yeah. it mixed nuts. In L.A., just eating my balls, and it's all black crowd. So I, I do some joke. But up, but up, but up. Nothing. And then I see this big black lady in the background goes, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> And then they all just start fucking laughing. And once again, I don't address it. I go into my neck. Oh, so no. I fucking, uh, oh, just <laughs> dry mouth. And it's even worse when you're making a. Oh, yeah. Sound on the mic. Yeah, and you forgot to bring water up. And it's just, oh, it's the, it's the worst. I just remember gigs where it, nothing was happening, and I could just hear that fucking Patrice laugh from the back of the room. We would be like, that same kind because of, he oh. has that kind of, yeah. <laughs> Patrice can actually make you bomb. I've had crowds liking me. He didn't like the joke, and he's so fucking loud and intimidating, he would get a crowd to turn on you. Yeah. Oh, what's that? What's that shit? What's that? Yo, Bill's up there. He's talking about. This motherfucker just said the whole crowd is turning around and no one's gonna tell him to shut up. And then you start yelling at him, and then all of a sudden the white guy is yelling at the big black guy. This yeah. is racism. And then you lose all the white people in the crowd, and he he can literally turn turn around a good step. That is true. Uh, let's go to the phones here. Andy has a question. Andy, what's up? Andy, hey. No, no? nothing. You? His name's not Andy. It's probably like it's somebody else. Andrew, Andrew. And he thinks it's or Anthony or the guy that has a question uh, for Dane Cook about a corporate gig. No. No, nothing. All right. I, he wanted to ask you if you were fired from a corporate gig. Like there might be a story is there. Is there urban legend? Oh uh, no, out there you know what? That? No, I'll tell you what it is because I was hired to do these two corporate gigs and I just did the first one out in LA and I never uh oh Barry I Katz never given up give I them never do them. You know oh, what I mean? Two corporate gigs? No, because it's just like you don't really you don't really enjoy it. You feel rented. You feel like a part of the, you know. <laughs> you really do. <laughs> it's just so I agreed to do it cuz they were really enthusiastic. You came like, with the tent. That's oh, yeah, set up one of those floppy armed dogs <laughs> behind you on stage, like, you know, come buy a car. And so, uh, oh, I agreed to do it. Oh, oh hold on, hold on. Go ahead, Barry. Barry. What happens these corporate gigs, they, like, oh. they always overpay. They completely overpay. Right. They'll send private jets. They'll do whatever. It's like a, whatever it's it like takes. Whatever it takes. And so it's, it's always hard to... Uh, Turn down, yeah. To walk away from those things. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'll do it. I haven't done one in years, <laughs> and that's two gigs, and the money's fucking great. So I go down, and um, and the first thing I always say, the second I walk into, it, you know, any gig, you know what I do on stage. You, you got the material. You've heard the CD. Oh yeah, we all listen to it. That's what I'm going to do tonight. They even have to sign a waiver to. to yeah. Do it. So wow. I, I do the show. I do my show. You know, exactly the same way. And the crowd's laughing. They're into it. Actually, they, you know, I didn't think it was gonna. It wasn't so bad. They weren't. But of course, the president of the the deal comes. So you up got after. a full standing ovation at the end. I know. I mean, the show was 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 good for that environment. And then they came up and they're like, um, "We just want to talk to you about the content." Oh boy. The uh -huh. president of the uh, company was not uh, uh. too enthused. And then I'm like, um, "Okay." And he goes, "If we make you a list for the next show of things," and I was like. Uh, Goodbye. I like, no, I'm not the guy for you. Obviously, you should you know call somebody who can come in and, and and do what you need. But it's like I gave you the shit. Watch the stuff. You know what I mean? And uh, if I'm not now, gonna Dustin tea, Diamond is doing the gig. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't have doubted it though. So no, did, I wasn't did you get paid for the whole walked, thing. Uh, no, I got paid for the first show. I told wow. him. 
See you later. Keep the other half, and, uh, Good and, for you, and man. it was a mutual walk away. You know someone's head rolled for that, too. You know <laughs> someone got the axe. Who was the head of entertainment for that corporate gig? It was some Missy uh. down in personnel. And, and it can literally she... be just, just one little thing, and then they'll try not to pay you. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. All kinds of things can happen. Let's say hi to Sarah. Get the Bacon Brothers. They'll do it. <laughs> they're Remember we saw the Bacon they're, they're, Brothers at one of they're those... They're on morning TV yesterday, gigs yeah. promoting their singing thing. Hey, Sarah, what's up? Hey, guys. Um... I was at the uh, Dane Cook and Bob Kelly show last night. Granted, it wasn't exactly, you know, Bob Kelly show, but <laughs> it was oh. so funny. We, My friend and I had such a great time, and I just wanted to tell them that you guys were awesome. And afterwards, it was, his, well, we thought it was pretty hysterical. These two fat chicks come up to my friend Britt and I, and, uh, and they're like, we just flirted our way in and blah, blah, blah. And I look at them, and I'm like, you look like you got in because you're one of Mari Povich's special children. They, Not because they you said flirted they your way. flirted their way in? What, to the like, yeah. backstage or whatever? Yeah, that's what they were telling us. And Ooh. it was pretty funny. And also, Dane Cook signed my friend's boobs. And Bob Kelly did, too. Oh, yeah, very nice. Sounds yeah. like a great <laughs> night for everybody. Everyone had, had fun. so much fun, but I, we have to say, like, my friend and I, like, we felt kind of bad because, you know, Dane Cook was, like, leaving in, like, a limo or a town car or whatever, and Bob Kelly was getting in a minivan. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I love it. I can't wait to get Bob on the phone. <laughs> it's, it's, That's it's perfect. Uh, no, we, we're trying to get Bob on the phone, but uh, I don't know. He's probably sleeping or whatever. So well, where he we sprained his wrist closing that say? sliding door on the van. Yeah, yeah, Bob's not here, Sarah. Oh, okay. Well, I've been an ONA fan since you guys were on WNEW. My brothers got me hooked on you guys. I'm Thank a huge you fan. so much. Thank you. And I'm not an ugly chick that's a huge fan. Oh, uh, we'll meet you soon. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks right, for coming thanks down to the so show. Much, guys. All right. Yeah, I mean, uh, Dane's killing. We're all going to tonight's show. I can't wait. Which one are you guys coming into, the first or the uh, second? Uh, 11 o'clock show nice. I'll be at. Cool. That's what I was told. Yeah. He said it's even better. Late shows possible. always. A, late shows always a little bit better. You know what I mean? Because late so shows can be touch and go though. Because you got the audience. You know. <laughs> yeah. A little more boozed up. A little boozed up. You can handle that though. It's all part Some of comedians the deal. can't handle that. Yeah. Uh, do we want to promote any of these other shows? Loyola College tomorrow night. That's a private gig. Uh, all right. Yeah. October. What do we got? October seventh, Colorado Convention Center. That's supposed to. That's a pretty big gig. That's a pretty big venue. Awesome. And then uh, M.E. is Maine, right? Colby College, uh, October Colby. 14th Yep. in Waterville, Maine. Yep. And then the University of New Hampshire, October 15th. Damn. Sure. And uh, the new CD is called UNH. Retaliation. Huh? UNH, yeah. UNH. Yeah. You guys want to listen to the Martha Stewart thing real fast? Oh, yeah, here's Bobby. Go. Oh, Bobby's on. All right, Bob, what's up? You tell that bitch it wasn't a minivan. <laughs> I got it to one of those little bike car cabs. A bike cab. I'm not even kidding you. I had to take a fucking bike cab to the show last night. <laughs> Are you kidding? There was no cabs at 6 o'clock, so I had to get this Polish dude on a bike. <laughs> to pedal you down there? Yeah, and he looked... I at, would walk first. I asked him how much it was. He looked me up and down. He said 20. That's <laughs> usually, what, 10? It's probably around 5. Five. <laughs> Fans saw it? Saw him? You saw Bob Kelly? Yeah, I saw Bob Kelly getting peddled by me on 42nd Street. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Nathaniel? Yeah. I, was, I, saw, I saw him on the car. I was like, Nathaniel. He looked at me like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, you called out to me. You could have just peddled by anonymously. But you, thought, you thought it would be good to say hi. Bob, you couldn't get on that big eight-person circular bicycle that rides through Times Square that you want to fucking run over when I'm, I'm driving in the city? No, there was nothing. This, it was a brand new one, though. It was brand new. It was, uh, he said I was the first one ever on that bike. Who cares? The, you don't ever want to be up. seen in that thing. Well, what was I going to do? Walk? Oh, do you Bob. stop to listen to the guys play the spackle buckets, too? I'm sorry. I didn't have a limo pick me up at my five-star hotel. <laughs> You're not a fancy man. <laughs> hey, Bob, we learned a lot about you today. Uh, thanks to Dane Cook. You used to have very long hair. Oh, shit. Looking like, what did you say, Crystal Gale? Oh, yeah, he's a great reference today. Crystal Gale. He had long, long, luxurious hair. You called me fucking Crystal Gale? I called you Crystal Gale, man. (laughs) And you used to play uh, the punch in the asshole game? Yeah, but that was, Dane invented that. He came up to me one time and just punched me in the asshole. (laughs) 
<laughs> and say, I, I just shit my pants. <laughs> and then you ran with it. <laughs> and what do you do afterwards? I, I made that up. <laughs> what, do you, what do you say? Yeah, that's that? mine. I trademark it. I sell it on my website. <laughs> you can buy a kit. A <laughs> home game. Did yeah, you? he. Uh, I used to have. But Dane, you had long hair too, man. Yeah, I had there's kind of the picture, mullet thing going. There's a picture of you on the internet, bro. Me and you both at the same time had fun. We looked like Charlie's Angels. There was a t- <laughs> <laughs> there was a time when the mullet wasn't the mullet. No, it wasn't. It was, it was just it was a like haircut. Feather. Or the, it was a feather. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Dennis Miller had that cut haircut yeah, for a long time. That's, right. that's what it was. And then and then it like turned into this mullet. Yeah. Where all of a sudden to have it was to be just some backwards cross-eyed hick. Uh, at a car show or something. I gotta say though, Dane's hair was beautiful and conditioned. Mine was nappy and curly. I do say that <laughs> Dane had better hair than me. Dane, you remember that time we picked up those two chicks at the beach? Oh my, the the witches. Oh my, me, <laughs> me and Dane picked up two witches from Salem <laughs> <laughs> at the beach. But Dane was always a conservative type of kid, and I was always like the creepy. Right. I want to lick somebody's asshole. Like they had like <laughs> knife scars on their face, Bobby's chicks, you know. Yeah. So we wind up going back, but I'm the one always the aggressor with the chicks, and Dane's kind of laid back, kind of always had a chick, and I'm the one, you know, banging broads all the time and talking about pussy. And we get back to this uh, their apartment in Salem, and it's this like this house has been there since 1702. Oh, shit. And they're telling us they take us in the basement and tell us about the witches, and I'm shitting my pants. We go back upstairs. They both get naked, start taking showers. Yeah. I'm frantic. I'm frantic. Dane has the guitar in his hand. They come out naked. I'm like, dude, what the fuck are we going to do? He goes, Bobby, get your fucking shit together. <laughs> and just starts playing a song on the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> he knows how to work it. Get the guitar out, start playing a little. But Bobby's like, they're doing spells in there, man. They're putting spells on us or something, dude. He was so concerned that they were trying to really put some kind how of... How much uh, coke had he done to paranoia himself up uh, <laughs> that much? Yeah. yeah, when it comes time to gameplay, Dane really is the quarterback. <laughs> Get your so- shit together, faggot. How are you girls doing? Do you ever hear this song? <laughs> witchy, By Moody Blues? Witchy woman. <laughs> Moody Blues. Yeah. This is Vixen's Edge of a Broken Heart. <laughs> Did you tell him that you shit in a bucket? No. Oh, well, now we're getting the. See, now we're getting the. Yeah, the, we're getting the, the dirt. We're getting the good stuff now. Who? Same we're night? in the fucking tour. You can't shit on the tour bus. Yeah, you're not allowed to take crafts on the tour bus. You're not allowed to oh, shit cool. on the tour bus we whatsoever. That. That's good. We understand that rule. Yeah. And so I'm sitting there. I th- I'm on my computer. Dane goes in the bathroom. He comes out. He goes, hey, dude, check this out. He has a, a brand new sterling silver <laughs> toilet bowl. And it's, I, it, it was the... It was so perfect, the shit, that I thought it was fake. There was you mean, no, like, you mean the wastebasket. Little... He showed you the wastebasket. Yeah, I had the wastebasket, Bobby. It was a w- whatever. <laughs> Barry, shut your face. You're not my manager, all right? Shut your mouth. Well, you did say if that. you let him on the microphone again, I'll come down there right now and punch him right in one tooth. <laughs> hey, it was a wastebasket, buddy. <laughs> listen, people are listening. I could do something for you. You're going to be a big star. You're going to be a big star. You broke your knee. This is going to put you on the map, buddy. <laughs> I'm thinking if if we could dislocate your shoulder on 4002, I could, I could get you on Carson Daly. <laughs> God, that's how it works, though. <laughs> All right, so the shit in the uh, wastebasket. It was you know perfect. my weak stomach. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't think it was real. I oh, thought it no. Was yeah. me, but then I look, he, I look in again, and I just saw a shit drip. And then his face, Bobby gets that face oh. when he's like, he wants to puke, but he starts getting that, like, body in a river for three days look. You know, it's just like, bloated. <laughs> his eyes look like a shark. They just, like, turn black and glazy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who shits in a bucket? Well, you Game got it. Does. Not on the bus. What a great rule that is, though, because once someone shits on that bus, it's, it's over. over. Well, these I, guys, it, Anthony, I agree with that. When you're doing 85 down some highway, but when you're parked next to the college and there's 98 toilets five feet away from you, there's no need to shit in the bus. These guys locked me in my. I know you guys locked me in the back room one night. I had the back, uh, you know, back room is like a little sliding door. And the bus was so dry that I bought one of those uh, um, humidifiers. And uh, and so I, tr- I have to take a piss at like 5 in the morning. We're moving. I get up, and the door is jammed. And I know these guys have, like, pinned it or done something. So I'll lay down for, like, another hour, but now I've really got to go. And I'm like, I'm bang. I'm like, come on, guys. But the engine is... 
I say three hours later, I finally had to piss in my humidifier. That's how bad it was. I had to piss oh, wow. in my humidifier. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all on film. Th- I bus- hope you threw it away after that. Yeah. yeah. The, the bus driver. What was his name again, Dan? Brian. Oh, this guy. I, I love this. This guy was the biggest creep. He. I was out in the. I would wake up in the middle of the night and just go sit with him. Like two weeks into the tour, he starts yelling at me. He goes, "What the fuck kind of tour is this? What the fuck." <laughs> There's no alcohol. There's no fucking drugs. You guys aren't fucking whores. What the fuck is you playing Xbox, you fucking bunch of faggots? <laughs> <laughs> wow, what was wrong with that guy? I don't know, dude. He just was... He, he had driven like, you know... Everybody. Like Usher and, and like all these, you know, Which huge... means he, he gets the pussy that they don't want to fuck. Right. By the way, if Jimmy was here, he would have called out that Bob's story had no ending. Had no nothing. Well, apparently you just did. Thanks, Well, uh, No, I was just saying if Jimmy was here, he would have done well, it. Well, we we're all looking at around the studio uh, uncomfortably. I didn't point it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I pointed out that Jimmy would have pointed it out. But you, by, by doing that, you pointed it out. Not not at all. You need like a little sound bite of yeah. Jimmy just being like, nothing. Shut up. You got nothing. <laughs> the yeah, car let crash. it sit. Good story, fat <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bob. I guess we're going to let you go. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're telling us uh, you got to go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you guys going tonight, right? Yeah. All right, yeah. cool. Well, you know, the show's going to be great tonight. It's probably just going to be just as good as next week at Stress Factory in New Jersey, <laughs> where I'm headlining the 22nd. To 22nd. <laughs> ah, <laughs> nice slipping. I'll see you guys later. Take uh, it we'll see you tonight Bye. at Bye. the uh, 11 o'clock Take show. Take care. Don't dislocate a toe at this show. Bob Kelly, everyone. Do we have time to try to this uh, try this Martha Stewart thing? Yeah, a little bit. Why don't we Finish try? It? What it? is she doing? She's rapping with P Diddy. Yeah, she's got Diddy. some show that's like The Apprentice. Only oh, okay. she's hosting it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something like that. Uh, yes, uh, Than. Yes, Than. Than knows. I think she also has just sort of a talk craft show. This oh, is, is that it? Is, is that what it is? It's for? Thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right? No. Okay, yeah. She was wearing an M Diddy belt buckle. While this was going on, oh my God. M Diddy diamond belt buckle. She's M Diddy, and uh, P Diddy was there to help us help her out with some uh, slang and language. It's Miss Martha from Jersey City. I'll bake you a cake and make your crib look pretty. Mm-hmm. I get mad oh. respect like my I, I man, look. Big Diddy. I, can't look at I got the heaters running out of breath, like when he ran the city. Keep going. They thought they could stop oh, no. me. But they must be silly. Silly. I got my ankle bracelet off. Now I'm free like Willie. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Kmart queen, so I know you feel me. Oh, no. They gave me love on the inside. That's why they call me M. Diddy. M. Diddy, baby. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. Don't clap. Oh, my God. Wow. I, I can't, can't look at anybody. <laughs> I can't <laughs> look at any of you. Oh, no. told you, they're, they're in the winger era. Have you ever been so embarrassed for somebody that you don't want to make eye contact with anybody lest they share that embarrassment and you have to acknowledge it? What was worse, her rapping or his like... Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, that's, that's right. it. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's gonna get him the cred he needs. Bad boy. Yeah. Aha, <laughs> the M Diddy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. That hurt. I don't like when things like that hurt. Well, then uh, Diddy oh, teaches pain. Starts teaching Martha Stewart some uh, some raps. Oh, Rochester! I'm here with my bro Diddy, and I'm so excited because he's gonna teach me how to rap. Now, I just want you to notice, Wes. What are the security guards doing? PB and J's. Oh, they're eating. See, they took me out. <laughs> that is so great. Well, um, first of all, <laughs> what I really want to know is. What are the meanings of, like, these few okay. words, okay? Cheddar. Little, one, little is, 101. Is cheddar cheese? No. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, my God. Okay. I don't get the slang. Cheddar's money. The cheese. Oh. Cheddar. Okay. Cheddar's money. Okay. Shorty. Okay. I have no idea. I mean, you're, you're, you're I'm tolly. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're tolly. Um, you're, you're, you're daughter. Oh I seen God. your daughter. Yeah. You know, I, I would call her sh- a shorty. Because she's like six feet tall? No, no, no. She, she's a um, young, pretty thing. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's a shorty. Oh, what I'm about calling. nigga? Yeah. What does she, that mean? <laughs> she's going to get booked on uh, P. Diddy's Bad Boys at Comedy. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be the next person to eat their balls on that show. <laughs> Tolly <Tallies>, thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Flossing. Which um, is? What you're doing right now with that $8 million oh, piece okay. of ice around your neck. Mm. That's Flossing. Benjamin's. Um, which you make a lot of. That's $100 bill. That's oh, money. Oh, Benjamin Franklin. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so oh, 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 my God. Oh, hey. 
Yeah, it doesn't have to do with um, not flossing your teeth. No, it's, it's, it's flossing. <laughs> flossing is just over the top. Okay. So it's just. This okay. needs white guy voice. And then balling. Wow. Balling. I mean, I know what balling is. And you know she's pretending to be that stupid. Yeah. Yeah. What is it to rap? Oh, okay. Balling. <laughs> <laughs> Ball into rap is job. living life to the fullest. It's just, you know, um, oh, okay. you, you work Having hard. A ball. You work Having hard, a ball. you play. There you go. Okay. Work hard, you play hard. Okay. Ooh. Wow, that is harsh. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> Diddy in uh, glass bags. <laughs> just a line. He's got his own uh, Ziploc line coming out. The Diddy. Diddy zip. <laughs> Keeps all your food with, with chill. A with a Keeps fragrance. it fresh, yo. Keeps it all fresh, yo. On the fresh. <laughs> wow. That is horrible. Biggie should come back from the dead and shoot him. He's going to be trying. Yeah. He's tr <laughs> yeah, he should come back from the dead and sit on him. Just kill it. There is no reason that he, sh he should be hanging out with Martha. Wow. How bad what is happened? What happened to the rap world? Thank God there's a few guys out there killing each other to keep the whole thing real. Because they, they, the, the, the pioneers, or the guys that were in there pretty early, they've just all turned into nothing. Yeah, I a kizzle. I'll tee off, I'll golf with you, make sure you buy a Dodge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all those guys. It's so, wor it's so embarrassing. See what they were, were doing oh. a while back. Oh, we're, we're in the countdown. We're done with oh, the show boy. today. Uh, Brian in Dallas, real fast. Yeah, hey, I was just wondering when uh, Dane's going to come down here to the improv and when the Torgasm DVD comes out. Dallas? Uh, yeah. Be around Dallas sometime? All right, man. We're putting a big uh, retaliation tour together. Uh, hopefully it'll start uh, sometime uh, into the fall. And as far as Torgasm, we're editing it together, and we'll just uh, we'll see. Uh, it'll be done when it's done. It's going to take a little while. I don't think he's going to be playing the improv anytime soon. You know where the Cowboys play football? You might want to uh, look for him there. He, <laughs> yeah, they, they, they just added three shows. <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah, two shows. All right, Brian. Thanks, Dad. Well, we're running out of show here. Dane, this was a pleasure, man. Thank you so much for coming Absolutely. by. Absolutely. Yeah. Finally. We've had you on the phone a few times, but in studio, it's great. Yeah, much excellent. gooder. We'll be at the show tonight, and, of course, everyone should look for a retaliation in their, their old uh, record stores. CD and DVD, right? Yes. Anything else we want to promote there, Barry? No. We're good. We did good. <laughs> we did good for you, right, Barry? Thank you so much. I we love you guys. Good. It's, it's been a long good. time. We you haven't seen Barry in a few years. Stars. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do some things with Barry in the coming months. You never know. And of course, Bill Burr sitting in for Jim Norton. Bravo, Bill. Good job. Yeah, we had a lot of fun with Bill the last yeah. couple of days. So you're gonna do the whole uh, week next week? Yeah. We got Bill getting up early. Well. He's like, uh, yeah. I the novelty wears off already, and, and he's I just like, did this Fuck. morning, I was like, they do this every fucking yeah. day. Oh, <laughs> we're done. HBO tonight, Bill Burr.